cosmic particles begin to vibrate with the sound waves, indicating they have acquired energy. It may be a tiny amount, yet it's enough to straighten out my thoughts. But the energy can also be huge. As the setting sun shone upon the final rest, I saw a musical note glimmering in gold and dancing in the air, just as they expected. The movement spread my life energy and pushed me up a pedestal until I could smell the aroma of talent in the air. The aroma was me. Once it faded, it cast me into the abyss, where the light from my eyes extinguished. The light shines through my fingers and onto the white keys as I continue writing, hoping the melody points me in a direction. In the reflection, I see what should have happened. He glows golden. Just like they first expected. Pushes the world to absurdity. Do you believe? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Identity 5 Arena 2022, where the stakes are high, but the competition is even higher. I will be your caster today, Sadaquil, along with my co-caster, Poch Spice. Sadaquil, I'm so excited for today. I'm excited to be sharing the mic with you, and I'm excited for each and every one, because I don't know if it can get much higher than this. This is the last IVA of the year. I'm sure you were up to date. Well, ev I think everyone is kind of shook with the news of the map updates, the persona updates, also the character updates that's happening. So what better way to cap off this season with IVA in Southeast Asia? And um, I'm excited to get things going, especially with the teams that we have lined up for us. Yes, very true. And we're starting off really strong today with a rematch of IVC champion versus champion over here. Got to say, I'm really excited to see how that's going to go down today right now. IVC champion versus IVA champion. As you mentioned, we got GH and ZT to start things off for our first day of the group stage. So, I, uh, sorry, of the playoffs. So I'm really excited to see how this is going to pan out because so far the momentum is with GH. But, you know, I, I would say coming into this, it's so weird to say ZT is the underdog. And in online tournaments, they have been the victor. They have, we have not seen a new champion of IVA, even if we bring it back to the Nello, the NM Fam tournament. So this is going to be a pretty interesting one because one is def one is going to have to fall to the lower bracket uh, after tonight. Yeah, very true. But I will have to say that regardless of the loss that happened in IVC, people mm -hmm. are going to be coming in stronger with a better mentality. They have been practicing. 
And you know, you can't just stay on your laurels and be like, oh yeah, I won, I v c、mm -hmm. The competition is going to continue to rise as we keep learning and growing with the game. Oh, yeah. And speaking of learning and growing, this、uh, IVA is actually growing more in terms of the fan activities and for, in, in terms of promotion as well. You guys have noticed some of your favor favorite Southeast Asia influencers have been promoting IVA. And also, we do have a giveaway, Sado. We have,、uh, you guys would、uh, just, if you guys could take note, we did partner up with、uh, Sunny Kim. It's at Sunny Kim23 on Instagram. So, Uh, she is giving away two S skins and one A skin courtesy of at SunnyKim23 to all the viewers of IVA. So,、uh, how are you going to win? You guys have to check out the main page of Nello Mello. It's just, yeah, to like the stream. It's pretty simple mechanics. And also, you got to follow at SunnyKim. So, big shout outs to at SunnyKim23 for giving away two S skins and one A skin. And also, we're going to have a promotion for all the loyal viewers and also the ones that are going to earn some coins. So, the top 10 loyal viewers of the highest points of、uh, identity for tonight will be, give, be given IDV goodie bags courtesy of Nello Mello. So, Sado, how can they actually do that? Would you happen to well, know like, what they have to comment?、Mm -hmm. Yeah, each interaction and comments you do earns you loyalty points. So you just got to be active this whole time, whether it's just talking to other chatters or, you know, rooting on your favorite team. So definitely try to stay active, stay energetic, and, you know, join、mm -hmm. in the fun with us. Like we are on the caster table, but ultimately we are fans too, and we want to hear your voices also. Oh, yeah. We're all about the fan in interactivity. So that's how you get loyalty points. There's also NM coins that you guys can get by、uh, chatting as well. And you guys can see there is a pinned post in the comments section. Shout outs to Nell for setting that up. Because with the NM coins, you can actually win some awesome prizes courtesy of IVA, some fan size, and also a grand prize of a VIP front row seat to the IVA grand finals that's happening next weekend. So. Keep interacting, keep engaging with the chat because you could stand a chance to win awesome prizes courtesy of the loyalty points or the NM coins and also at SunnyKim23. So, pretty good. I think it's a win 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 situation for everyone, s a d a k u l Yeah, very true. I gotta say, that's just, you gotta be active and, you know, so many、uh, prizes on the s i t here, you know, just keep supporting your favorite teams and shout out your favorite teams as well, you know. And、speaking of their favorite teams, looking at the brackets here, where Elez、uh, Sadoquil did mention ZT versus GH to start things off. And we're capping off the night with FH versus TNG. But don't you fret, ladies and gentlemen, we still have a weekend full of Identity Five action. MP versus CB. We also got FT versus Scouts. So it's going to be a jam packed weekend. Again, this is the playoffs. So it's a double elimination format. So there is an upper bracket and lower bracket. But Looking at the tippy top s a d o ZT versus GH, I'm going to ask you a hard question here. Do you think, how, who are you favoring coming into this one? Well, when we are on the caster table, it's a little bit hard to take a bias here. <laughs> However, I do want to say GH just because of kind of their triumphant win in IVC.、Right. However, again, we did see ZT did like such a good redemption arc during that final match. They were in、mm -hmm. a point deficit and they made up a lot of points despite that. So, you know, keep their moral high. Mm -hmm. Speaking of GH, here they are, ladies and gentlemen. s e i c h u is going to be on the Hunter side. We got Capgun, we got Little Boy, we got 481, Zhao Kahn, Skyfall, Nine Mamos,、uh, all household names. And just for the sake of balance,、uh, Sado, I will probably agree with you there. They do have the momentum, but you cannot, and you can, I cannot stress this enough, you cannot look past ZT because. Well, yes, they did get the recent win, but ZT, though, this is their stomping ground. This is what they're known for. So here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit of a new lineup here with Miko Mary Brown. We got Kuga, of course. You got Miko Mochi, Shadow, Zed, Run, Miss Night Train. So it's still the same old, same old. But you know what? After that win, though, it's, it just shows that gods can bleed. So let's see if GH can continue their win streak here. Yes, very true. Gotta say, this lineup is looking really exciting tonight. I'm just sitting on the edge of my seat here as we are going to go into our picks and bans now, p o p c h And while we are looking at the picks and bans, we are going to go to hospital to start things off. And also, big shout outs because I see a lot of people interacting. We got over triple digits watching us already. Ishmaru's here, and Diku. We also got Giselle. Uh, Nell is also watching, I believe. Sarah is here. Chocho, also. Big shout outs to Chocho. 
uh yeah so keep commenting because you know you stand a chance to win some enum coins as well as loyalty coins again lots of giveaways to give uh to for this weekend and also at sunny kim 23 on instagram for you guys to be able to win the s T uh, s skin also the a skin so picks and bands uh uh sato how you feeling about this very interesting that ZT was the one who won the coin toss and they were the one to choose that Kuka's going to be coming out first with their hunter so definitely a display of dominance and having their hunter come in and set the tempo for the start of the first half of the round one here so mm -hmm. definitely looking forward to it as well as GH's survivor is going to be on the pool and we do see that Skyfall is going to be coming in with the forward here. Yeah, that's an interesting thing you pointed out because I believe if we bring him back to the grand finals of IVC, Kuga did not set that tempo. So I think now maybe they kind of learn from it. They want to be able to be the ones to take charge of it. And Kuga being very stable at the start, he's strongest at the start of the the tournament, right? So you want to give him his comfort hunter since there are no hunter bans. So now banning out the priestess, rightfully so, because these uh, having a priestess in this map, we've seen it time and time again how. They're able to lose sight of the the survivors inside the hospital when that priestess is able to set up those portals. But so far, having a forward, having a postman, the I would say the classic GH lineup of just being very well rounded. I think uh, they might actually opt for maybe a mercenary at the last minute and probably another kiter to to back up. And Kuga still has his fair share of different hunters because. I mean, he doesn't really follow necessarily the meta. I mean, he's, he's tried to use Breaking Wheel here and there, but, you know, a Dream Witch is still up for grabs in, in a map like this. So it's still looking pretty okay on his side as well. Yeah, and we are going to look at the bans on the survivors as well. And we do see an Embalmer ban. Very interesting. Generally, a survivor that can secure a draw. So Kuka definitely want to capitalize on getting as much points as he can in this first match here. And mm -hmm. I do want to point out also that the postman as a priority pick is rather interesting and it kind of shows like the teamwork morale for uh, GH because we do know that every time the survivors yes. are on the pool they commit to really hard teamwork and supporting mm -hmm. each other so we also are going to see the patient come into play here mm -hmm. really nice I love his ability to kite around the hospital area with his hook so much oh, yeah. mobility and mm -hmm. utility so yeah and just to add on that, uh, that pick of the postman I think uh, little boy really known for that priestess but since it was banned this is his other go-to hunter that uh, go-to survivor that he, he typically goes for right so at least if you okay you're gonna you're gonna get the support that i can I can have at least you're not gonna be able to you know a chase at ease because i will be sending out letters you will have to look for the dog bite if it will latch onto your ankle and now kuga double downing on just not having any healer at all so he might be opting for a dream witch pick your barmaid has been one of the go-tos as of late with her recent changes so uh, a good ban on kuga's side this might leave open another mercenary psychologist if they want to go for another healer so it's still up in the air on what gh has uh since they do have uh, i would say two kiters and well three kiters and uh, uh yeah the little boy decoding but no opting for the dancer Wow, I really do like this dancer pick can be really useful actually with her music boxes and as well as mm. her passive buff where she can jump down from the two story of the hospital allowing her to have that extra little speed boost as well. So very interesting. And I do also really appreciate the ban on Barmaid because we do know that while Kuga also has a really strong dream witch. Kuka also does have a clerk too, and both right. are kind of soft countered or hard countered by barmaid. So mm. definitely keeping your options open by bar that by banning that barmaid. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah, I'm still taken aback with this dancer pick because I'm trying to recall, and maybe you could correct me. Uh, uh Sato, I don't think the GH has ever brought out a dancer, so this is really playing into what you said of how well they want to be able to, you know, what just use the team dynamics, right? Because dancer. She could set up these uh, these music boxes in the ruins area and just give a hard time for the hunters. But also, if if he's not going to go for the dancer to chase, the others will be kind of a nightmare to go for, making the dancer the one of the fastest decoders with her music boxes. So uh, I would say, yeah, team synergy wise, GH has you know what a, a little uh, a little extra to offer. So Kuga, I don't know if he was expecting a dancer to come out. So maybe this is what they want to bring out just in case he goes for. The, the clerk just so that they can uh, pr uh, promote cypher rush and uh keep him on his toes but it's still up to kuga how he's gonna choose to approach this uh this very diverse lineup 
Yeah, we have a lot of utility and there can be really good kiting depending on who you decide to chase first. However, I do think the priority would be to get the postman off of the field immediately. For sure. His, his letters of support are just so detrimental to a hunter if you allow him to stay on the field, whether it is his decoding letters or his letters that can help with hiding support. So really kind of lethal and picking your poison mm -hmm. if you decide to not chase him first. So it really yeah. just depends. I mean, any other any other survivor would be a nightmare to chase, right? We talked. You talked about how the patient in this map alone would be really tough in the ruins area, getting into the hospital, forward the control that I, I believe it might be narrow. It might be Zaukan on the forward because Skyfall usually is, or maybe he could bring it out because Skyfall usually just goes for the rescuer, so he might go for the patient. I'm not quite sure. Uh, forward is just a nightmare to chase, regardless, right? And uh, dancer, depending on where she's at, she can be a tough. Uh, a tough down for any any hunters so it's gonna be a little tough and shout outs to the people in the chat Giselle saying that we're looking like weather reporters so uh this just in ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for <laughs> watching tonight it's gonna be a weekend full of identity five action once again if you guys are just tuning in sado uh is to my left and botch spice hello that is me uh, we will be your casters for today's matches first match is going to be gh versus zt champion versus champion and also, please and keep interacting with the chat because you guys can stand a chance to win awesome prizes. Yeah, very true. Those loyalty rewards are looking amazing. And if mm -hmm. I were in the chat right now, I would be, you know, messaging as much as I can. Just not even just for the rewards. Just this is a really exciting <laughs> lineup and I want to have my voice heard. So definitely oh, yeah. make sure your voice is heard if you are watching on the sidelines. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's more of just interacting. And also being able to just cash in your coins at the right possible time, the NM coins as well as the loyalty coins. So this is going to be interesting. So um, looking at the lineup once again, you know, in a hospital, this is uh, we're still waiting on what Kuga is going to bring to the table. So uh, are you because for me, I would actually yeah, clerk dream, which would come into the mix. I would say, though, if we're going to go with him setting up that tempo, maybe a clerk. I, I would love to see his clerk because usually what we noticed from IVC when the pressure is on, he tends to be a little over aggressive. But at the start of the game, that's when he's most dangerous. What do you think, Sado? Which hunter do you think Kuga is going to go for? Um, I definitely think it's a toss and turn here. I do mm -hmm. think that Clerk would be such a vital option here because with looking at GH's uh, lineup, they are going to be going for a kite heavy decode cipher rush. So mm. you got to try to stop the Cypher Rush as soon as possible and get someone down on the chair. And, you know, against a Clerk, you need to be kiting as long as you can. That first kite is so important because her camp ability on the chair is just incredible <laughs> in stopping the Cypher progress. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, right, you have, as a Clerk, the hardest part is that first chase. But once the, the first survivor is down, that's when the control can come in. So... It's really interesting to see this type of hunter coming into the meta now because it's like, yeah, usually it's like the hunters, they're really good early game, but late game, it's really tough to down these survivors like uh, if, if they set up properly. But with Clerk, she has a weakness and that weakness is the early chase. But man, once she's able to down that one survivor, it's just a slow and I, I would say it's a slow bleed for the survivors because it's just a, a, a to and fro of like, all right, down you. I'm going to control this cypher. All right, you're going to try to rescue or you're just going to sacrifice, but I'm still controlling the cypher rush. So it's it's a it, it's a slow burn for the hunter hunter mains out there, but it's a slow bleed for the survivors. But um, while we're still waiting, Sato, any thoughts on the recent changes uh, coming into, well, next season, though? Like we had different map changes. I'm excited for that. I'm excited, especially for the moonlit changes, because uh, that's gonna. For me, I feel like that's that's something that I would love to see more, because it's like acrobat has a, li a lot of good jump spots there, patient as well, like a lot of uh, interesting uh, scenarios you could pull off with those changes to the map. Yeah, personally, I'm kind of excited more for the hospital palette changes, Ooh. just because hospital is so loopable and it's kind of annoying when you're playing <laughs> hunter so getting rid of those like really detrimental palettes and making it so you need to play on your route a lot more carefully is right. going to definitely freshen up the game a lot more and you mm -hmm. need to 
be more active in what you're thinking of where you're going to go next if you're playing survivor so yeah i wonder what, if with those new changes to the hospital right will it still be a survivor sided map i mean it, it still will be obviously but i wonder how how the routes are going to change also shout out to entity we talked about a little bit uh lakeside is going to have two entrances now so that's going to be interesting also with what entry points that they can have um it's not a triple pallet anymore in Arms Factory. It's just a double pallet. I don't know what we're going to call it as casters now, because usually, like, oh, it's triple pallet. Double <laughs> pallet, center, go back to box if you're an OG player of Identity 5 and NAEU. So, also, I think that's something that we can also ask the chat while we're waiting. What do you guys think about the new changes? Also, I wasn't able to see much of the Persona changes. I know that instead of 120, it's 130. So, I'm interested to see what the interesting builds are going to be at this point. Because that's 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 a game changer for me. Oh, definitely. We're gonna see a lot of different changes, not only with the persona, but certain character adjustments. Right. Like Perfumer it has a buff now where her healing speed is no longer as slow as it was before. Mm -hmm. And just so many different variety in the changes we're gonna come towards next season. I'm also mm. personally really excited for the introduction of composer and his essence. Ooh. I don't know about you. Much, yeah that design was looking amazing to me yeah it was i mean we had the hype trailer at the start so i'm excited for that there's a lot and kuga blessing us with the dream witch so probably doesn't want to bank it all on that early chase and i would say he definitely has a lot more mileage on this dream witch so i would say this is a great pick especially um considering that all these survivors are gonna have to be on their toes coming into this because you know what after all i mean i've been I've been watching Professional Identity 5 since Koa 3 and the Dream Witch. Ever since he's been out, she's always been a go-to hunter at the start of the game. Yeah, I mean, Kuga is definitely just well known for his Dream Witch and definitely not something you want to really undermine in any means. So bringing out someone you are rather strong with and are rather comfortable with is definitely going to hopefully play into his favor in that terms of like familiar familiarity and mm -hmm. going into this first match you know you're gonna try to secure as many points as you can and dream which is rather do die hunters so we are going to be selecting our spawn locations right now i gotta love this feature also so pretty much a lineup here uh, but let's see where um kuga will choose to spawn here Got to go. Zhao Khan actually on that postman, so that's really interesting. Kuga wanting to go for that postman, like you said, and Skyfall on that patient. So he is the one that's going to be playing main rescuer. Little boy on the dancers. So Zhao Khan and little boy doing a little bit of the switch up. And Zhao Khan have been following his career for a while. He's usually relegated to rescuer, especially coming into this lineup. But as the postman, you know, he's a pretty underrated kiter too, since uh, he is on the team with little boy. So I'm excited to see how he's going to kite out this uh this kuga dream witch because i'm pretty sure uh kuga is gonna want it down that postman right off the bat yes very true postman i would assume he'd immediately go to the vicinity of the hospital where little boy can support him with those music boxes being in that bird cage area so definitely gonna provide a little bit more of an advantage while even though the postman is in the vicinity of the mm -hmm. dream witch still has a fighting chance but we will be heading right into the match now with Kuga going right to the area of the postman and postman is going to be heading right into the hospital as well. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head there, uh, Sato. But now we see that uh, Kuga actually kind of cutting off the route of the postman, kind of forcing now to chase the dancer, which again, Little Boy did set up these boxes. So it's actually going to do a little bit of cleanup to buy a little more time for them to rotate away from the hospital, which uh, Kuga wants. Now Zhao Kahn in the area here of the ruins near the, the shack area. He's going to get leached right off the bat. So this is actually the start that Kuga wanted. Yes, very true. Really persistent in trying to get this postman and is going to take that hit immediately right now with the main follower. So rather interesting as the leech follower is still in tow right now. And we see postman is going to be transitioning from the ruins area back towards the hospital where little boy is probably going to try to support his... Uh, last remaining mm -hmm. beat right now yeah the thing is he's not sending out that much letters he's trying to go inside the hospital here he's going to send out one but a patroller drop is going to stop the postman from actually cons uh, dropping the letter and we do see that the postman is might eat a bite here and we do see that oh my god the forward with the support just to be able to uh eat that hit 
And now we see the postman is on the last legs here. He's going to get a hit on the pallet. No. So nice job on the side of the postman. Definitely seeing the strength of these music boxes being such a hindrance to the Dream Witch here. We're going to see that now going to go right back towards Xiao Kahn and trying to get down this postman and wasted quite a lot of time here with another pallet drop as well. Going to try to mind game him around these pallets. Going to be pinched in by both of these followers, but no, he's going to utilize that time mm -hmm. to completely change his area over here right now. And yeah. it's only a matter of time he gets hit, but no, he is really disciplined in not throwing down that pallet, but... Wow, we oh. do see a pallet stun on the spawn <laughs> follower, so great display from Zhao Kahn here. Zhao Kahn has got nerves of steel, and now he's trying to drop the dog onto the, the follower here. He's able to get it, forcing Kuga to switch up followers. He's just going to only a matter of time here, but excellent juking around the trees area, and he's eventually going to get hit. If we can ask the prod to actually like hit that skill button so we can see uh, where we're at in terms of traits, that would be great. But now we do note that Kuga has his first survivor down. Five ciphers still remaining, but I mean, this was the support you were talking about. So let's see how they're going to bounce back from this because Kuga kind of, uh, well, I would say has already um, got his, like his, his checkbox done already. Postman not supporting the survivors. We do note that two music boxes have already been done. And now we see that the forward is going to make his way into the area here. But he's going to try to de-leech. Unfortunate there. Eats the hit. And now Postman has some Tide Turner to transition away from this chair. Yes, very true, but the hit lands and last effort will be proc. Didn't have that much time to have a like a rebound kite here, so he will be seeing the chair for the second time here. Gonna try to focus his sights on uh, the forward as well. He is half injured and getting a down on him would be really detrimental in this rate. Gonna utilize that rugby ball to gain a little bit more distance, but the blink Ooh. hits and we do see a double down situation here. Oh, just the switch to Blink was great. A little traffic jam situation forcing Kuga to actually move on away and Little Boy would actually be leeched. So double down situation this is not what uh, GH wants, especially in this uh, in this mid game situation. Four Cypher still remain. Postman on his second chair forward being forced to heal up. This is buying time away from Cypher. So this is what Kuga wants. So I would say the pace is still up in the air, but Kuga is, is slowly gaining that momentum. Yes, very true. Four ciphers are still remaining, and we do have two leeches on the board here. Postman is looking like he's going to expire as they try to recover their resources here and gain a little bit more like traction but little boy is going to be spotted out by a follower going to be pressured a little bit but we are going to see the con consistent back and forth the map pressure of the dream which re really mm -hmm. just coming into play and being shown at the moment little boy is going to stay on his toes and not be spotted over here and postman will be sent back to the manor yeah so best case scenario for them is actually to push for that tie and they can uh, actually do that but with four ciphers remaining they got to be very careful wow. getting the blink hits through the wall Female Dancer, at least, is just injured at this point because if she was down, that would definitely be a big detrimental blow to GH, the defending IVC champs here. ZT still wants to hold the crown of IVA champs, so uh, they're definitely, you know, Kuga starting things off is a, gr uh, is a great move on their part because he's definitely controlling the pace of this match. Little Boy moving on away, blink hit, connects, and the forward is right at the vicinity. Yeah, if we're going to be in this area, going to try to apply a little bit of pressure onto Kuga, but that is one Cypher not on the chair here. Going to come in for this Balloon Rescue, oh! but wow, the Flywheel comes in and just narrowly saves her from a hit here, but it's only a matter of time she does go down, and there is a Terra Shock with Fiend Dancer going down once again. Oof. Yeah, two Cyphers still remain, buying a little bit of time. This is the first time the Female Dancer will be on that Rocket Chair, but I would really like to see the resources on the Survivor side. I'm not sure how much football is on that forward we are going to see him try to just go for a balloon hit here able to dodge it so beautiful sidesteps here it seems like he's gonna try to keep injuring can the female dancer actually uh, uh struggle free able to do it but we do see that the uh, the the leech was already positioned there and now uh it's only a matter of time he's gonna get onto that rocket chair i would say a very valiant attempt from gh but that just means there's another a survivor that is not going to be able to come in for this rescue now so patient is going to be forced to rescue if they decide to rescue in this case but look at that Ooh. forward is going to be chased down by this follower now half injured and if he gets hit this is going to really be such a blow to oh. gh right now wow mm -hmm. and but the thing is patient yeah patient though has three hooks left so he can go for a, a safe rescue 
Able to close it out. He, let's see if he's able to get it timed well. Tide Turner is going to bring this female dancer away from that rocket chair. So being forced to focus his attention on Little Boy. So a great back and forth, but still everyone is injured. Tries to go for a hit here. Able to dodge and now go through the vault, uh, go through the pallet here. So Little Boy doing a great job just controlling the hunter at this area. Yeah, definitely doing such a good rebound kite to buy as much time as possible, but he will be going down and seeing the chair once again. We do see on the side of the other survivors, Patient is removing his follower at the moment, but look at that too. They are both injured at this very second, so no one's going to be coming or going to be able to get this rescue in a timely manner without having to stop and heal each other. So we do mm -hmm. see that Angle Dancer is on the second chair now, so they're going to just be focusing Ooh. their attention on yes. working on these separate machines. Ooh, but, but we this, do see yeah. there's another follower going to chase down the forward here. And you got to note that the main body is positioned, sandwiched right in the middle of both these survivors. So it's going to be a tough call, but at least once the female dancer is out, there is going to be just one main follower that is left, but I'm not liking how separated these survivors are because they need to heal up. We do note that the patient has one hook left. Uh, uh, forward is really on his last legs here. No more resources to use. He's trying to push for a cypher here, but it's still going to be a tough call for the survivors. Uh, they're going to need to pop two ciphers and stay alive while they're both injured. So it seems like Kuga has this one in the bag if he doesn't let go of his momentum. Wow. Yeah. Wow, we're going to see that blink come into play. Definitely available and to secure that down on the forward here. And now all the pressure is going to be on to GH. When you are GH, you're going to try to secure as much points as you can in this situation. Despite the mm -hmm. four going to be going down, but we do see the drop on to the forward. For mm -hmm. another chair over here but patient is going to try wow we do see another mm -hmm. balloon drop up wow <laughs> it's just constant back and forth here <laughs> Yeah, I think, yeah, he Kuga is just trying to position himself in the best possible way because that Cypher is already primed. Actually, no, he's going to position himself right at the birdcage area because two Cyphers here have already been worked on. So I think he's going to go for a bleed out strategy at this point. He's just going to try to chase down Skyfall, force him to waste his, uh, his hook just for him to be able to transition into the hospital. So this might actually be a longer game because if he's able to pop the cypher in time and bring up that forward it's going to be a pretty interesting scenario we do see that the forward is going to get picked up once again let's see where he's going to bring him towards yes uh -oh. we also see well the patient is going to be spotted out in the birch cage and we're going to see that blink come onto the main body but we have a leech coming onto him as well so not even mm -hmm. going to be able to spot up the touching <laughs> here as we see a constant back and forth of the forward getting hit and trying to you know as you said get the as best optimal position as possible so we're gonna see mm -hmm. that all we're gonna try to zone out and pressure um him from not being able to go towards that wow. and we do see, uh, the final hit and that blink is gonna really just secure that 4k that kuga really wants at this first match this was a master class and how to use dream which especially in the last um seconds of that match because there was a lot of drop down hits and In the hospital it's like the the hunter can get so much cypher control and that's a uh, kuga putting it uh, on display there for everyone so it was just a beautiful showing of how the dream witch can be used once you're able to not only just uh, tunnel like one survivor but constantly change targets so it was uh, an intense back and forth but ultimately when he got his first survivor down it was uh it was really kuga's game to win Definitely. It's a show of display of skill on the side of Kuga, but also showing that, you know, Dream Witch is pretty much never going to fall out of the mud of this race. <laughs> she is so powerful in terms of just her map control and playing pressure and having survivors do these side tasks, whether it is like healing up because they got hit or trying to take their followers and leeches off the board. It's just such a big time staller when you are trying to be in a meta where it is very cypher rush heavy. So definitely mm -hmm. showing the strength of Tree Witch as well. I'm trying to think of a perfect analogy. I feel like this game is actually just built for the Dream Witch. Like, it just... Pressure on survivors and map control is just... Yeah, I think you put it best. Like, you're just playing side quest missions while um, you're you're trying to pop the main cypher here. So, in, in, in the hands of a talented hunter like Kuga, this is what the Dream Witch can offer, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what? This is actually... I would say GH is very strong in the early game, too. So for him to be able to control the pace 
in that manner for him to shut down any type of uh, well offensive lead that they could have gained was actually a beautiful showing on Kuga's side. So it just shows also after September, I think the well Kuga. We still have to see if the rest of ZT uh, how they're going to perform, but at least Kuga has still not lost his step in this game, and he's still one of the hunters to fear moving forward in this tournament. Yeah, you said it just perfectly that GH cannot rest on their laurels. They got that win in the past, but this is a new chapter in their era of Identity 5, and it seems like at the moment, ZT with Kuga showing off with his Dream Witch is looking really strong at the moment. So just gotta see if the ZT survivors really capitalize on that momentum he set forward. Yeah, that was that was an insane showing, but let's also talk about the survivors, right? Zao Khan had an amazing kite. I was able to kite out the patroller, was able to transition accordingly. I mean, he did bump into some survivors, but I feel like it was more of they were prompting him to, you know, at the forward was telling him go inside the hospital. Dancer was also setting up her boxes just for Zhao Kahn, and it just shows the levels of, uh, well, I would say the range that Zhao Kahn has, not just being known as the rescuer since I think that was one of his showings this year um, when it comes to IVC. When he uh, when he joined the ranks of GH, he was really just relegated as a main rescuer. But it shows here he's one of the slipperiest survivors out there. Um, um, so beautiful uh, performance there by Zhao Kahn. And also the others, uh, excellent how they were able to uh, kite for how long they could. And now it seems like uh, we will... Are we going to go to the... Yeah, it's going to be Seichu that's going to be up. But ladies and gentlemen, we will take a very short break. When we return, it's going to be the second half of match number one. Stay silent when you hear this sound. The static particles begin to vibrate with the sound waves, indicating they have acquired energy. It may be a tiny amount, yet it's enough to straighten out my thoughts. But the energy can also be huge. As the setting sun shone upon the final rest, I saw a musical note glimmering in gold and dancing in the air, just as they expected. The movement spread my life energy and pushed me up a pedestal until I could smell the aroma of talent in the air. The aroma was me, but it slowly faded. Once it faded, it cast me into the abyss, where the light from my eyes extinguished. The light shines through my fingers and onto the white keys as I continue writing, hoping the melody points me in a direction. In the reflection, I see what should have happened. He glows golden, just like they first expected. Pushes the world to absurdity. Do you believe?
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to day number one of the playoffs of IVA. Potch Spice and Sada Coil on the mic, in your ear, in this action we are seeing between GH and ZT. And a lot of comments uh, sat out in the chat, so I love the insights. A lot of people saying that, yeah, they love the support. And the Cypher Rush was a little too slow. You know, it was it was good, but it wasn't good enough. So it's really neck and neck coming into this one. So I want to get your thoughts on what we're going to expect coming into this one. Because it's GH now. Um, it's going to be God J... Oh, well, no, sorry. It's going to be GH's Hunter, who sates you, who's going to have to pull up a 5-0 for them to stay alive in round number two. When you are Seichi, you gotta feel a little bit of pressure. You know, this is such a splendid display of securing that 4 okay, So mm -hmm. definitely has an uphill battle going but we do know that seichu is also such an incredible hunter as well we have mm -hmm. we do know as well that sculptor is in his arsenal and you know could be possible we even see a sculptor round one just because of how comfortable he is with that character. so definitely looking forward to what may be in store right mm -hmm. now yeah sculptor in this map especially like in the ruins area not maybe necessarily out in the open can do really well seichu also known for getting the 4k with that hunter i mean at one point we called him here in iva super seichu like super science seichu with how well he performs so i'm excited to see how he's gonna rise above the occasion because if you guys are just joining us now this is the playoffs and it's double elimination so the loser of this will be going to the lower bracket we are seeing a ban on that priestess feel like it might be sort of the same um yeah starting off uh, when it comes to banning the priestess maybe securing the forward I don't know about Postman, though, if uh, they're going to go for that. But I think, oh, going with the Mercenary and Dancer. So Dancer remains out there. Rejoice. Definitely. Again, we're going to see that Dancer. As you said, she has quite a bit of utility here. But just going to have to wonder if they are able to make it work a little bit more successfully than we saw last round. Mm -hmm. So definitely an interesting priority pick here as well yeah. as that Mercenary. And we do see also that the survivor chosen to be banned first is Priestess, you know, just generally a headache no matter what map you are with the portals, as well as a Seer ban now. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure who it was in the comment section, whether it was Genesis or Lauren, but yeah, they really love the Dancer pick. However, um, it was mostly like cleaned up by Kuga, and that's something we also have to highlight. He was able to just clean up and not leave it on its own. And now we see the po the Prospector come into the mix. You did say that the Seer is banned, so uh maybe seichu is kind of hinting that he will go with a single hit hunter but you know what sculptor doesn't really mind especially seichu with the great statues that he places so let's see what else he will be banning he's going to be banning the barmaid so kind of looking like a dream witch pick here uh wouldn't you agree uh sato yeah definitely as i said before um barmaid coming into the meta because there is just often so many hunters that try to use either a dream witch or a clerk and barmaid is such a hindrance to both of them but definitely i think we should be gearing up to see a dream witch with that ban mm -hmm. so now uh last pick on the side of zt if they are going to you know what just double down on this uh this dream witch pick probably pick another kiter that could do well with transitions i was a big fan of Skyfall is patient, you know what? He was able to get a clean rescue off. But no, they want to really double down on this dream, which going for a doctor coming wow, they're really committing to this. So uh let's see if Seichu is gonna fall into going for this dream witch because this is gonna be a nightmare <laughs> to uh, line up to go after. Definitely a doctor is a uh enemy to be reckoned with on her own as she just has that syringe she can constantly use and with just skillful usage of it she can just constantly be you know healing herself behind pallets or gaining distance and just allowing herself to extend that kite out and you know mm -hmm. just being able to also support her teammates having that really fast healing sk uh, skill as well so definitely looking forward to it Mm -hmm. Wow, this is this is a little insane. How what do you guys think in chat? I do see Sarah here asking for a watch party. Genesis, also one of the top commenters, I believe. Keep it coming because there will be prizes, the loyalty rewards, and also the NM coins. So just keep uh, reacting and keep uh, that promoting the stream as well because IVA, the third IVA of the year, definitely bigger and better and a lot more surprises here. So Seichu has a big decision ahead. Will he... Yeah you know let's stick to what he knows but then this lineup is just insane or just try to you know go with a little unfamiliarity and try to counter it but in term not go for something optimal uh for him to come in with i mean 
he could go with Bon Bon, but I mean, in this map also, it's kind of hard if you don't bring keepers, and it's going to be also a little tough to chase any of these survivors as well, but I'm going to throw it back to you, Sato. Any any hunter come to mind here if he's not going to go for the Dream Witch? I don't know. When you are say to, uh if you're not picking Dream Witch, uh, like you said as well, the survivor lineup is looking rather interesting, but hold the phone. We are going to see a Bon Bon, <laughs> so uh, rather um, excited to see how well he does with so his Bon Bon. I just totally took a shot in the dark there. I did not. I, I'm just following the <laughs> script. Sato, did you see the script in page six? Like, that's Bon Bon. Okay, gotcha. Cue in the Bon Bon. That is going to happen here. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to look at the other screen here. It seems like uh, they will be bringing three. I'm not sure if there's this final yet, but one tide turner and three flywheels. This is still going to be a little tough because I'm in mean, Doctor. He, she's going to need time to deco. Uh, she's going to need time to heal up, and Bon Bon won't allow that to happen. Just like the clerk we mentioned, you know what, the first chase is going to be so important because Bon Bon really shines when he's camping the survivors out. So note that all the members of ZT have their own right when it comes to kiting. So I'm excited to see how they're going to face up against uh, the Bon Bon of, uh, of, of Seichu here because Sato, the wind condition is clear. They just need at least one survivor out. Definitely, and we are going to be transitioning to our spawn selections and locations as well. Seeing a little bit of a toss up <laughs> on where the doctor wants to go, but um, the doctor's already kiting. The doctor's kiting. Yeah, very true. <laughs> doing such a great show of her kiting ability here, but um, nonetheless, we are going to see a secure lock in for the survivors, having a little bit of a wall as well, and we are just going to be waiting for Seichu to be picking his own spawn location as well. I thought he was going to rotate the map as well, but it seems like he wants to go for that Doctor, which again is going to be a pretty uh, optimal down to start things off. But I mean, it's still like you want to go for the Dancer, right? Because the Dancer can promote that Cypher Rush with her boxes. And also some some Hunters also opt to go for just downing the Rescuers, but you don't want to, you do not want to down a Rescuer, especially if a Dancer is on the loose and a Doctor as well. So. Uh, I think Seichu picking uh, the corner, the corner, the left, the upper left corner is actually a good, uh, good choice. So we're gonna have to just head into the match, ladies and gentlemen, to see how Seichu will roll with the punches here. Again, he needs to, if he wants to tie this, he needs 4K. Yeah, and we're gonna be seeing Seichu uh, transition here. We're gonna have our position uh, turn to the female dancer as well, and gonna set down that slow box to try to really slow down that hunter. Gonna be really tactful in not getting hit by these. Uh, wow. Bombs gonna really skillfully utilize that pirouette spin to gain more distance and not get hit by those bombs. Um, we are oh gonna see that God. also Seichu <laughs> is gonna have confined space, but another slow box, such a detriment to having any distance gain when you are Seichu. But no, it's looking like it's only a matter of time, then the dancer gets hit, but no, third oh. box is going to be thrown down and just allowing the dancer some more mobility to completely leave the area and just buy so much time here. This is actually a great utilization of the boxes, right? Just keeping it a constant threat, but not enough for Seichu to completely commit. And now it seems like he will be going. The pirouette is going to drag him towards the end of this map. So what's good here is that Seichu is cutting him off from that last box. But, I mean, Cypher progress is still going to be okay. I mean, Doctor is there. Mercenary, one of the slowest decoders, is still out and about. So it's not looking too good. But Prospector is not too bad when it comes to Cypher Rush. And Shadow doing a great job so far with the discipline. But the yes! flywheel to move away! Such an amazing flywheel, you know, she still hasn't been hit yet. Such a such a lengthy kite from the side of uh, the female dancer as well. Gonna throw down that pallet and still does not get hit by anything, not allowing that bonbon bon to gain any presence whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Seichu really just needs to get a secure down on someone and fast, but you know, female dancer, a threat wow. of her own showing. <laughs> she can avoid these bombs so skillfully and discipline uh -oh. showing and taking that hit and Prospector, ooh, able to get the hit and another, but the Prospector is gonna go for the flywheel, but unfortunately unable to time it well. And now it seems like Run might have to live up to his name and run away. From this uh fully uh fully fed bonbon bon. but what an amazing kite by shadow getting hit by the last bomb so beautiful showing here by seichu had enough of that dancer shenanigans now he's gonna chair him 
close to the dancer's box. I think he's going to do a little bit of cleanup here, but the doctor is going to be on patrol here, playing ambulance. He's going to definitely heal up the dancer while Mercenary is already in the area. Probably going to pop that last cypher and just go for the rescue. Oh, he's uh, not. Gotta okay. Love, mm -hmm. oh, gotta love mm -hmm. the support that came in from the prospector. However, he did get down really fast as Seichu decided to make that decisive change onto, you know, really changing his targets onto him. And it seems like it paid off finally securing someone on that chair after such a long matter of time. We are going to mm -hmm. see the mercenary in the vicinity trying to buy a little bit more time as well. Going to go for an after half rescue potentially here. But Night Rain is also going to be in that area too. Yeah, so this is uh, this is what's tough, right? And this is the respect that they give Bon Bon because the camping ability is just so good. Zed being very careful, one of the best in the business when it comes to rescuing. He's going to force the bombs to come out, eating like halfway. And we do see that the, the, the Miss Night Rain is also here. They're going to try to body block the Tide Turner, but last effort is going to be popped onto the Prospector. So two Cyphers still remaining. Prospector is going to move completely away from the Cypher that they want to pop and Shadow you know what, the dancer, the one that was chased, is far from uh, the vicinity of Seichu. So, and I have to say, you know what, the rescue attempt wasn't there, but still, we're going to see the last cypher, no pop, unfortunately. So they were going to have to force this cypher rush to happen just for them to at least secure a tie. Yes, uh, it's definitely good that Seichu was able to secure at least one kill so far on someone, but we mm -hmm. do know that... There is still such a decisive lead that Kuga set yes. here, so gotta gain as many points as possible and try to get as many survivors as you can, but it's looking a little bit grim in that sense, gonna have the target change onto Mercenary with one Cypher remaining as well, and while we do mm -hmm. see that he has two elbow pads left for uh, end game as well as to continue keeping this kite on to Seichu as well, doing such a good job on avoiding these wow. bombs as well. Gonna use that elbow pad to narrowly avoid another bomb and, mm -hmm. you know, definitely doing such a good job of buying a lot of time for his teammates to continue the Cypher rush at the moment, but he is gonna take another bomb mm -hmm. hit and have a health, health damage state. Yeah, so it seems like, yeah, Zed already on her last legs here. Um, the delayed effect is still going to continue the kite here. So he's, he's, uh, she's propping herself up to a, a dungeon kite, but this is still going to be a little tough because the last cipher not yet done just yet. And Zed has already run circles around this map and Seichu still holding on to this blink. So that could be an early down situation for the mercenary. So they're really, they're, they're planning this end game situation, right? They don't want to just recklessly pop this last cipher. They want to be able to time it well. Female Dancer has already picked up an elbow pad. And now it seems like Seichu is already transitioning because the last Cypher has already been popped. And now Miss Night Rain has to be very careful not to stick. Oh my god, now in plain sight here. And now let's see how the, the side steps on Miss Night Rain. Yeah, definitely having her dancing shoes on is going to take a hit regardless. But you know what? It's She's doing a decent job so far. We do see that Bon Bon does not Ooh. have the tension. Link, and wow, gonna take another hit going to the half damage state, but we do see that the elbow pads are gonna allow the female dancer to go to that exit gate that Mercenary is working on and definitely going to secure that draw that they need. Yeah, Miss Night Rain, once again, the doctor can heal up if she provides that distance, but it's how it seems like she's actually transitioning towards the front gate area. Seichu, will he bite and actually go for it? No, it seems like he's going to make a hard left. Miss Night Rain actually making a beeline. The doctor making a beeline towards the dungeon. The dungeon's already open. You need two bomb hits to control this doctor from going to the dungeon, and it seems like it's going to be a three survivor. Oh, no! Oh, oh my god, I am corrected, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a tie. Wow, amazing bomb, really gonna just secure that they don't get another point. So amazing show from Seichu. However, we do know that CT is gonna be in the lead regardless with that tie in tow. Oh my god, that was, I apologize. I, I called it a little too soon there. That was, um, it looked like it was gonna be a tough situation, but I didn't notice that the blink was already there for Seichu to use. So considering the circumstances of all this, it was still a great showing on the side of Seichu because that was not the best start. But he was able to roll with the punches and kind of mitigate the points. At least uh, still getting a tie is better than getting three person out. So looking at the, the, the containment time here, Zed's mercenary above 60 seconds. The doctor as well. But I would have to say MVP goes to Shadow Starbuck here. Female dancer, 87 seconds. Count it up, ladies and gentlemen. That was an amazing kite by the female dancer.
Yeah, I mean, definitely showed and provided so much support in the sense that you when you're buying so much time that allows your fellow teammates to definitely just continue on with that cypher rush. And while that was very true, Mercenary was the only one with the decoding slow speed. So it really just allowed them to push those ciphers forward. But at the end of the day, they did secure that draw. So, I mean, it goes hand in hand when you're ZT, that's what you wanted, but at least on the side of Seichu, he secured those two kills. So definitely need to try to take in tow as many vic small victories you can take, so. Yeah, definitely just really excited about that. We're gonna have to see how uh, we're going to be taking a break, actually, so, you know... I'm back. I'm so sorry. That was... That was the, the bonbon got to me. My bad. You were saying <laughs> Sato? <laughs> we are going to be taking a short break now, so stay tuned for the Identity 5 action coming up. Stay silent when you hear this sound. The static particles begin to vibrate with the sound waves, indicating they have acquired energy. It may be a tiny amount, yet it's enough to straighten out my thoughts. But the energy can also be huge. As the setting sun shone upon the final rest, I saw a musical note glimmering in gold and dancing in the air just as they expected. The movement spread my life energy and pushed me up a pedestal until I could smell the aroma of talent in the air. The aroma was me, but it slowly faded with time. Once it faded, it cast me into the abyss, where the light from my eyes extinguished the light shines through my fingers and onto the white keys as i continue writing hoping the melody points me in a direction in the reflection i see what should have happened he glows golden just like they first expected Pushes the world to absurdity. Do you believe?
blasting night with no end in sight. Come on, hurry! Even the dazzling light failed to pierce the darkest dream. Noir, the Melodus family has no need for useless people. Creating a perpetual motion machine is like being trapped in a never-ending dream. Reality grows from these sketches, expanding through years of fruitless effort. Yet this illusion is ceaselessly... Welcome back, everyone. If you missed it, we just watched Seichu uh, secure a draw right now. So despite that small victory, ZT will still be in the lead because of that draw condition. So definitely mm -hmm. looking forward to our next matches coming up here. Mm -hmm. And once again, if you guys are just joining us now, that's Saddle Quill to my right or left. I can't really tell my directions. I'm Potch Spice, we're casters for tonight in this intense champion versus champion match. GH versus ZT, and ZT has struck first blood, getting a five point lead when it comes to round number one. Round number two, GH has to focus on just winning the entire thing, or this round at least. So it seems like we're going to be moving up a little bit. Uh, in, in, I, I, we gotta move down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna scooch on down here because, uh, it seems like Chocho has joined us and, uh, what's up, Chocho? So we are gonna talk about round number two because it's gonna be an intense one. And for those of you that just joined us now, please do comment in Facebook. You get a, st you stand a chance to winning awesome NM coins so you can convert that to amazing prizes. So, sorry, can we hear that again? Ah, uh, okay, okay, gotcha. So just the voices in our head talking once again, Sato. So back to my spiel. Again, if you guys want to win some awesome skins, follow the Facebook post on Nello Mello's page. And also, it's at SunnyKim23. Shoutouts to her because she's giving away some amazing skins. And also, keep commenting in the chat for you guys to be able to get some amazing giveaway prizes. Again, there's loyalty rewards. There's also NM coins. So keep on just commenting random stuff because I saw a lot of people react to that scary blink at the end, Sato. Yeah, for sure. And to be a little bit more specific, the top 10 loyal viewers with the Let's go. Points, will get the Identity 5 goodies bag of merchandises. And do remember, you know, each interaction and comments earn you those loyalty points. So definitely keep up the, moment the momentum, excuse mm -hmm. me, and having your energy really high to ha stand a chance of getting these merchandises. Yeah. And, um, Share us what thoughts you have. You guys are also chiming in with how you felt about the certain picks. Seeing Doctor this early on. Uh, we also saw, you know, Kuga's Dream Witch. Excellent showing for both these teams. I really feel like GH versus ZT will be one of those rivalries in Southeast Asia that will just keep going back and forth because after GH has won in IVC, uh, a lot of people are questioning it's not the season of Z. Is it still the season of ZT or has the new reign of GH 2.0 uh, reign supreme for uh, this for the uh, at least the last parts of this year? So I'm excited to find that out and I'm excited to see how the picks and bands are going to go because it seems like we might be actually going to Lakeside Village. Yeah, very interesting. Just gonna go back to what you said there. We did hone in on the fact that we thought GH was at an advantage, but we also did say that they couldn't rest on their laurels. And you know, folks, we did see that happen in live time. ZT is in the lead at the moment, so GH needs to kind of recuperate, reset their mindset, and come in with different energy and, you know, having a game plan of how they're gonna uh, retrieve their points that they need back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it seems like we are going to have a little bit of switch up. I'm not sure if actually it's Lakeside, so d d don't believe me, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure. But Nico is coming in to hunt, so it is going to be Kuga that is benched for now. We do see that it is Lakeside, and a Bonbon bon is actually going to be banned. So maybe doing their homework a little ahead of the time, uh, just banning away Miko's Bonbon. Bon. But now we see that the Seer and Dancer, pretty well-rounded lineup, but this does leave open Little Boy's Priestess. Or... 
different. It's changing things up with the prospector and the merc. So we are going to see who is going to be picking this uh, this lineup. But it seems like yeah, they they do want their aggressive start with this prospector and also have the old reliable mercenary probably on Skyfall's side. Definitely, we do know that from match to match, time and time again, history does show that GH also does have a fondness for having some kind of harasser, whether it is a forward, an enchantress, or in this case, a prospector. So definitely mm -hmm. looking forward to seeing how successful he might be in this coming lineup. But we are going to see a barmaid ban on the side of Miko mm -hmm. here. So definitely interesting and a little bit of a sign of what we may be expecting from Miko as well in terms of what their hunter pick is going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So bringing out the toy merchant, they actually brought this out also an IVC that just uh, ran circles around kuga so i'm excited to see the the jump spots that they're going to place with this toy merchant uh now that i think about it i think Nehru might be on this prospector uh skyfall might be on the mercenary because he's the main rescuer so let's see what zao khan and little boy will be locking in with but taking away the acrobat is very important so we've seen i've actually you know in ivc acrobat has been one of the most picked survivors so now it seems a little weird that we have been seeing the acrobat in round number one so uh miko realizing that all right let's just ban away uh the acrobat just to make sure we don't give that uh, that special kiting abilities to the survivors definitely true and to go back to that toy merchant point I like her in the sense that she can provide a lot of support with her catapults and there is the ship that you can use that as well as for her own personal self she can use that um, glider as well to completely go away from the ship and transition to a different area and it's going to be hard to chase her on foot so definitely mm. rather interesting as well as going to be able to provide wow we're going to see a gravekeeper pick here too so um Ooh. rather interesting you know posh what are your thoughts on this so going for a double rescuer lineup is actually a really interesting feat here because yes they do have one harasser but i guess they want to kind of turtle up here and kind of give some of the make seichu like hunt and relax hunting here just to alleviate some of that pressure uh because it seems like a very i mean this this does not promote cypher rush at all so uh, it would at least give Miko the the ease of hunting. But when it comes to rescuing, you got two options here and two tanky survivors, as well as the support of Zao, uh, of Zao Khan on this toy merchant. So it's uh, pretty interesting, I have to say, because GH, I, I would say they double rescuer lineups. Maybe this is something that they brought up like last year or years before. But now I think uh, they're just trying to show that they can expand in this type of lineup or this repertoire of being more defensive and just kind of waiting things out so i'm, I'm a fan of it i'm just interesting interested to see who miko will be bringing out based on the picks uh, and bands here yeah definitely oh man my face is just so like concerned at the moment well not concerned but i am waffling in my brain at the like the mm -hmm. prospect of what the toy merchant is going to bring oh, 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 sometimes we wow we are going to see a clerk on lakeside uh you know definitely a little bit of a show from miko with that indicator banned from the barmaid so you know we'd had a little bit of an idea but definitely um we have a lot of excitement going on with the clerk you know definitely having this pressure of first kite on both sides you don't want to be kited for so long when you mm -hmm. are the clerk but when you are the survivors you need to kite as long as possible to prevent that first chair so definitely going to be looking forward to how this match is going to play out with the clerk in mind yeah so we were talking about how cypher rush is not a thing so it's going to be even harder for the survivors here yes they can survive transitioning would so the rescuers are kind of kind of good actually all of them can transition greatly so miko most probably is going to bring blink just to have an early down situation but it's still uh again it, it depends on the first chase right we thought that seichu was gonna have a good time chasing that dancer boy were we wrong so now yeah. it's still up in the air for miko here uh, on this clerk but once that down has been made i think it's going to be a tough call for the survivors also because you don't want to play too much into his hand of not decoding but also you want to go for some rescues so it seems like i'm not gonna waste any time he's gonna chase what there's the lesser of evils here which i feel like it's gonna be tough either skyfall zaukan or 
the prospector here, it's still a tough night out for any clerk. Definitely, and I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't be chasing the mercenary because he can just use those elbow pads to get away and just waste the clerk's time so much so maybe wanting to go out of your way to try to narrow down your sights on that prospector but still we do know that the harassers from gh have proven to be really successful in the past so definitely just gonna have to wait and see but we are going to be heading into the match here right now with the clerk going to be moving away from the shack area and into the vicinity of uh jao khan and skyfall so we're just gonna have to wait and see here mm -hmm. Something that we have to note, ladies and gentlemen, is the control that Miko can bring to the Cypher progress. Because when a clerk is just stuck to just chasing what's in front of him, that's when you know it's going to be a tough matchup. Oh, all right. Just going for the recording here, just bringing up the pallet, allowing the Gravekeeper to use it. Again, going already immediately for the shovel here just to eat that hit. So Skyfall didn't want to waste any time. And you got to love that was already that was only like 10 seconds. And three times he's already like went back and forth, just going for recordings, going back and forth. So Miko. Go, you know that he has an excellent uh, sense for this clerk. Yeah, it's gonna take that hit right now and try to go into this ship area right now. Um, we do see that Skyfall's gonna actually be heading towards that Whoa. catapult. Maybe there's a trick and stow here to try to get onto that ship. Or no, but it's going to be hit mid-air. And we are going to see Skyfall have the chair for the first time. Yeah, and we gotta love Miko's discipline of constantly going back and forth. I love the theory of yeah him catapulting his way probably to the ship area because he's gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to see the clerk go up that ramp. So could have bought more time, but uh, luckily Miko is able to swing and swing accordingly. And this this shadow is where the clerk can get so scary. Just monitoring the ciphers back and forth, and and none of these uh, characters really promotes that cipher rush. And Zhao Khan forced to go for the rescue. Definitely, and it was such a fast down, but we are going to see the mercenary take a hit to secure this rescue, and Gravekeeper is going to immediately shovel to try to buy as much time as he can on this rebound kite here from the chair. We are mm -hmm. going to see him transition into the ship area and try again to buy as much time as possible. We also see that he has no more resources wow. left, so it's only a matter of time. And last effort does finally get propped, and he will be seeing the chair for the second time now. <laughs> Speaking of resources, Mary, uh, Miko Mary Brown has not even popped the blink just yet. So that's how excellent he is on that early chase. So it's uh, it's it's really tough for GH's call here because, again, it's uh, five ciphers still remain. Second time for Gravekeeper to be on this rocket chair and no more shovels. So at this point, sh should they just cut their losses here and just try and pop ciphers while this clerk is camping it's still gonna be pretty tough little boy forced to exit that cipher and respect the recordings while nico can just wait this gravekeeper out knowing that he already has secured his first down Yes, very true. They are going to sell Gravekeeper at this point because once again, as you pointed out, he does not have any more resources left and they needed to buy a lot more time in order to really uh, attempt a second rescue mm -hmm. and they kind of just want to save their resources in terms of just not committing to a second rescue and not allowing a second uh, health injury. But we are going to see now Miko is going to be targeting the prospector. Really interesting choice. Um, we're going to see if this prospector pick is going to prove fruitful here as he transitions towards the shack area. Oh, just blocking the way the windows here. But now we see him getting that stun. But oh my god, it closed the distance for the clerk. So it worked out in Nico's favor, and now the Prospector still has two Magnets left, and a Blink on deck, Sato. Yes, very true, but was able to utilize that Catapult to gain a lot of distance and go into the small boat area, and now Line of Sight has been lost, and it seems like the Clerk is going to really just commit to this Prospector here, going to try to secure a second down as quickly Oof. as possible. But look at the Cypher progress, there's still four Cyphers remaining, so it's definitely looking like the pressure is more on the survivors at the moment yeah three ciphers in the middle of this chase we do see that this prospector is just stunning this hunter left and right but those are the two magnets he was able to use now we see that the toy merchant is going to try to body block here so now able to transition oh the flywheel but able to hit the toy merchant through the window so going for a little bit of more support here but toy merchant now is going to be locked on here so uh, Miko is going to set his sights, still has Blink on deck, so at least no more threatening magnets to worry about. Definitely, I don't know if I really agreed with this, uh, 
this attempt to body block here because now wow we're gonna utilize that flywheel for distance but um yeah we're gonna see that she's gonna be recorded right now showing a lot of discipline gonna Oof. throw down the pallet but the recording does pull the pallet up and now she is down so she will be seeing the chair for the first time here and there is mm -hmm. a lot of pressure on the survivors at this moment Oh, we do see that the Prospector is here, gonna go for it, but no! Oh, the over-support, like you mentioned, able to down the Prospector in that, uh, in that scramble. Mm -hmm. So, I would have to agree with you there. You know what, the Toy Merchant probably should have not, and just saved her, her injury, or not get injured at all. Because now, this is actually playing into Miko's hand here. Self-heal will be utilized, uh, for the Prospector. Rescue did happen, but now he's just gonna... Oh, I thought he was going to go for the Prospector hit. Tried to go for a blink, but failed. And now the Prospector is... Up. All survivors are up and about, Sano. Yes, the saving grace is, as he said, they are all up and about. But it, Miko's really going to try to target his sights on Little Boy once again to completely go on this chair. But as he said, they really shouldn't have been affording this. But no, actually, he will be going for the Prospector. And now the Prospector will be down. Oof, and in that process, they were able to pop that cypher in the small boat area. Toy Merchant and Mercenary have been split pushed here. You can't, they cannot go for any heals just yet. And Miko, again, just playing the camping game. He knows that these, they can't touch the cyphers. He's timed them out. Uh, we do see that the Mercenary is transitioning away. But looking at the resources of the survivors, Mercenary has two elbow pads left. Toy Merchant can provide a little bit of support by throwing that pocket watch, but no more catapults. So it's going to be tough for anyone to transition away since the blink was uh, used already. So in that scramble, I would have to say it's still about dead even or like the momentum is still up in the air. But two ciphers still remain. Prospector already passed half. Uh, this is definitely playing into the win conditions of the clerk. Definitely. We, the only saving grace here is that the machines that they were working on are over 50 percent however mm -hmm. we are going to see the strength of clerk in that that cypher pressure is so strong gonna have to walk back and forth between these cyphers and not touching them we do see Ooh. the mercenary is going to come in for this rescue does take that hit and try oh. to get that safe rescue but oh, no he will be going down anyway and prospector needs to buy as much time as possible going to kite away here and use mm -hmm. that magnet but it's looking pretty grim in this situation potch oh able to get another uh what's that <laughs> magnet down here we do see that the recordings able to close out the distance the prospect are getting a little bit of that boost left forcing him to break the pallet here so another drop on the magnet mercenary still using the self heal 30 seconds left on that blink we are seeing miko just running circles around this uh logs area so one cypher remains so this is what gh is all about ladies and gentlemen they're bouncing back from adversity that last cypher is still i don't know if it's a brand new one but he is gonna try and focus his attention on Nero here so Nero doing a great job continuing to uh, prolong this kite definitely and this is just completely raw kiting ability from Nehru. He doesn't have any more magnets left to work with, so definitely showing his strength and kiting out Whoa. of this. Wow, but we're gonna see the Clerk utilize that blink to try to get a distance, but when the flywheel comes in, so narrowly avoiding a hit, we're gonna have the Mercenary commit to another body block here, and rather interesting because once he goes down, he can't utilize that self-heal again. Not anymore. Um, we do see that that last Cypher is almost primed and ready, so let's see if uh, it'll be popped in time, because once this Prospector falls, that's uh, that's going to be a signal for them to pop it. But now you got to give it up to Narakun, able to transition away and uh, avoid the window block. Little boy, he's uh, on timeout again. So it seems like uh, Mercenary is going to try to use a self-heal. Little boy still just trying his best not to be able to pop that Cypher. And it seems like he's going to focus his attention on sharing this Mercenary or not quite yet. Okay, he's going to go for it. But we do see the Magnet support from the Prospector, able to drop down the Mercenary in time. And they go for the last Cypher pop gonna utilize that time to completely pop that cypher and now all the survivors are scrambling gonna have that recording in tow to completely break that pallet and we're gonna see the toy merchant gonna work on that exit gate and the area but you know Nehru has bought so much time already kiting out this clerk gonna wonder mm. if he can provide it and be, make it be successful again having so wow. much time vaulting immediately and is going to once again narrowly avoid a hit from the clerk who does have detention 
Nehru just gaining the respect of this clerk, forcing him to transition away from that area, and now he's blocking the exit gate. It seems like uh, he, uh, Nehru is going to try to push for the exit gate to open, but there's still a lot of detention in the air, Sado. So it's going to be kind of intense. Magnet is here, but it's an open area, so it's going to be tough for uh, the Prospector to, to try and go for the stun. We are going to see a little pause in deduction, ladies and gentlemen, to just get our bearings. So uh, this is uh, kind of tough, I would have to say. I, I do a lot of people in chat, you know, going back and forth. I see Genesis, I see Krisha, I see Christian talking about how they're trying to predict how this is going to go. But this is what GH brings to the table, just the unpredictability. The, what seems like over support at the end of the day, sometimes it definitely works out in their favor because, yeah, I wasn't really a fan of the toy merchant body blocking. But the, the, the Narukun able to provide that kite for so long, I guess that's why they wanted to keep him alive for that long, because he can, he can kite for days. Definitely. It's just the belief in your teammates that really shine through there. And, mm -hmm. you know, as we said, we didn't really like that Toy Merchant body block, but that commitment from the Mercenary to continuously keep body blocking for Neru was just incredible to allow him a lot of extra time for the toy merchant to continue on mm. that cypher and prime it to get ready to pop so definitely rather interesting how the domino effect just went into gh's favor however we're looking yeah. at the conditions right now as they're all near the exit gate it's going to be a little bit tough to do anything in that situation yeah and detention i believe it was still like 60 seconds so it's still he's gonna have to commit to one right and he just needs one detention hit Best is going to get that Prospector because uh, once the Prospector is down, he can go for more. Uh, I will agree, yeah, Genesis did say in the chat there, the, the Cypher progress is a little slow. But, I mean, yeah, this is the playoff, so it's there's still a lot in the air. This is kind of, I, I believe this is their play style, though. They go for the, the support heavy lineup. It's not traditionally how we see IVLs, IJLs, where they play it a little more conservatively. This is why you got to love GH. They, they really leave it all on the line. It's, it's all or nothing, you know, a family, I don't know, Fast and Furious something. They, no one gets left behind or something. They, they want everyone out or no one goes out. Yeah, very true. Definitely so showed a back and forth of how their ability to consistently work on their teamwork and the strength of that, and also a little bit of a weakness, both show coming into play during this match. So definitely mm -hmm. got to respect it because there are some teams that play a lot more conservatively and not wanting to commit to these risky body blocks. But it did pay off a little bit. We are going to be headed right back towards the action with Miko kind of blocking off this uh, exit gate here and honing in his sights on the mercenary and oh. trying to get that recording hit just narrowly misses it going mm -hmm. to just completely zone out and pressure all the survivors who are still in the area but they're testing the waters here going to be really determined to actually open this specific wow. exit gate okay it seems like miko now oh allowing the mercenary to touch the cypher but it is so scary because the mercenary can eat a regular hit 30 seconds have already passed so it seems like gh might be prime to go for a three-person escape he's trying to get these recordings down he's gonna try to commit to one because the clock is winding out on detention and detention is the only factor that can actually carry him to win this uh, or at least tie this game out so it seems like he's going to try to focus his attention. But we do see a little bit of support coming into the Prospector side. No more mag uh, Magnet has already been placed down. We are going to see the final seconds here. So it seems like detention won't be a factor for these survivors. But he is going to get that stun. Yeah, just a constant back and forth. Miko feeling the pressure now as he can't really leave this exit gate area as there is going to be one survivor that is going to constantly try to touch it. The tension is off now, so they can't afford to take a hit if necessary. But we do see the toy merchant is going to be leaving this area, going to go for the other exit gate. Maybe they are going to try something else in this situation. But Chao Kahn being stuck in this pallet area as well. The recording is going to miss. Wow. And we do see Nehru is going to be another target but miko just can't get anyone down yet not just yet we do see that the toy merchant has already transitioned away to the cornfield exit teleport has already been switched to so that's another option he can go for but it seems like the prospector he's going to try to open up this exit gate no recordings have been uh, i don't know if they was able to record oh he did so now it's on lockdown we do see that the prospects are constantly gaining the magnets here would, would be a, a source of harassment for the survivors. And it seems like he's already moved on away from the exit. And it seems like they're going to try to make a beeline for the, for the cornfield exit, Sado. 
Yes, very true, but it's gonna constantly be pressured by the clerk here with the, the blocking off. So it's gonna be a lot more timely than usual. The magnet has been thrown onto Miko as the prospector is gonna be coming in for the uh, stun support and utilizes it very well. It's not gonna allow this distance from Miko, but once again, the distance is closing and it's only a matter uh -oh. of time he gets hit here, but mm -hmm. he's going to take that hit and now he might be trying to run it's towards dungeon. the dungeon. Uh-oh, two of them have already made it out of the exit gate, so it seems like they're actually going to go for a three-person escape because Nehru has a magnet to drop. Dungeon is about to open up already. Is it enough? Gets the stun going, and now he's going to be able to make the exit happen. Oh, just wow. so unfortunate for the clerk, but GH, ladies and gentlemen, getting the three-person escape. Definitely not phased by Miku, Mako, sorry, as well. It's really interesting that we just saw this constant back and forth of pressure, but GH was able to, you know, recharge their minds, come in with a different attitude, and it paid off. They got a lot of points back during this match. A three escape is definitely a good start and going forward here. Mm hmm. My goodness. Just proving a lot of people why they are the champs, ladies and gentlemen. The way they were able to face that adversity early on and for them to, you know what, yeah, still go with the over support and live and die by it. I feel like they have a new understanding or like a better understanding of this clerk matchup than we know because it seems like the over support definitely worked out. At the end of the day, this clerk is still a single hit hunter able to, um, yeah, she does have the best chase. Her cap is amazing. But if you're able to, you know, divide and conquer, like able to uh, separate the situation or separate her attention throughout all the survivors, I think you got yourself a game. And towards the end there, Miko wasn't, couldn't even touch uh, an exit gate because he was so concerned with downing with detention. And then they were already uh, planning their exit towards the cornfield. So it was just an excellent showing of why GH is the best of the best here in Southeast Asia. Uh, definitely a good rival for them to be constantly going back and forth here. ZT came in with a little bit of a disadvantage, proved us wrong that GH couldn't rest on their laurels, but now we need to flip that situation too. ZT cannot rest on their laurels either as GH made a really nice three escape at this moment. So definitely got to keep your eyes peeled and don't let your guard down in this situation. Oh yeah, what an amazing show. What a back and forth. It's uh, th it's five to s to eight in terms of points, but this is what GH needs. They want to be able to win in terms of rounds. Uh, they're not out of the woods yet because if ZT can actually four man escape this, they win the entire series and they send GH to the lower bracket. So a lot of people in the chat, yes, GH can still win this. So it's it's still up in the air, but. I'm sure ZT wants to be able to, you know, send one of their biggest rivals to the lower bracket early on. So it's uh, it's still going to be a pretty neck and neck, uh, like second half of round number two here at Lakeside Village. Definitely agree. There's a lot of stay silent when you hear this sound. The static particles begin to vibrate with the sound waves indicating they have acquired energy it may be a tiny amount yet it's enough to straighten out my thoughts but the energy can also be huge as the setting sun shone upon the final rest i saw a musical note glimmering in gold and dancing in the air just as they expected the movement spread my life energy and pushed me up a pedestal until I could smell the aroma of talent in the air. The aroma was me, but it slowly faded with time. Once it faded, it cast me into the abyss, where the light from my eyes extinguished. The light shines through my fingers and onto the white keys as I continue writing, hoping the melody points me in a direction. In the reflection, I see what should have happened. He glows golden, just like they first expected.
stay silent and I'll hear this sound. I'll hear this sound. The static particles begin to vibrate in the sound waves. Great energy forces a change in the tide and pushes the world to absurdity. Do you believe? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Identity 5 Arenas 2022. This is the third one we have this year, and what an amazing show we have so far between the two teams of GH and ZT. Sadok Will and Pot Spice at your service for this second half, and also the second match also, so do stay tuned for that. But I have to ask Sado and throw it to you, how you feeling so far? Because it seems like GH, they're finally awake and they're here to play. They definitely resurrected their wings, so if there was any doubters before, that definitely might prove you wrong a little bit, that they are mm -hmm. still in this match. They have the potential to come back from this, so definitely excited to see what is in store in terms of regaining those points and putting up a fight and giving as much you know view time for us to cheer on both teams. So guys, remember, you need to have your voices be really loud and supporting your teams too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, share your thoughts. Uh, react with us as well when it comes to the hype moments here. Once again, uh, there are you know loyalty rewards for the viewers. The top 10 viewers will get some goodies courtesy of Identity 5 and Mellow Mellow. And the ones that have the most NM coins could purchase you know shout outs and also be able to be a VIP viewer of the finals of IVA. And not to forget our friend at SunnyKim23 on Instagram. If you follow her page if you like the stream and you should also share it. You stand a chance to win an S tier skin, also A tier skin. So do follow that post on Nello Mello's Facebook. So we're giving away a lot of things. And one thing that this is giving away, these vibes that I'm feeling, Sado, is like I'm, I'm very scared because one will have to give the reigning defending IVC champ or the reigning defending IVA champ will be going to the lower bracket tonight. Yeah, they both have to be feeling the heat at this moment. It's rather do or die, and this is only the first match. You know, that's crazy that they ended up getting paired together in, once again, just a rematch of IVC and showing mm -hmm. constant tug-of-war situation. So definitely excited to see if GH can pull back the points, but, you know, ZT is still in rather good standing regardless, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and considering Seichu is gonna, you know, come back, it seems like this is the best possible mindset for Seichu to come back from because at least the the first half was won by the survivors, not the hunter, uh, Miko. So he's going to be a little more relaxed coming into this one. Depends on what would the survivors ban because like you mentioned, he does have that sculptor. Uh, also, he's messed around with Clerk here and there, so he might go for the mirror match. Or if they're going to ban the Bonbon. Bon, that's still going to be a, a tough night out for them because the bonbon was pretty good. But it seems like uh, we will be heading towards the picks and bans. And now um, the same goes for the survivors of, uh, of uh, ZT over here. How are they going to approach this matchup? They are going to start off with a dancer and seer ban. Yeah, rather interesting. They definitely want to get that seer out of the way immediately. Going to be a nuisance in the sense that his owl can be such a good support and generally just a universal ban. So definitely understand that and rather a respect ban Whoa. on the female dancer too. But we are going to see a hermit ban. Rather interesting. We do know that in some of the pre preliminary matches, we did see a couple hunters bring out that hermit. So mm -hmm. definitely not something that you want to underestimate. Yeah, I feel like he's. They're still like scratching the surface of the capabilities because there's so much creativity you can use with that hermit, right? Even encountering him as well when it comes to getting the the charges, the pl the blue or red charges, and also the cipher control. Uh, so I think this is good. At least they don't have to worry about that coming in. He 
like or, or at least Seichu's uh, Hermit. Uh, I would say it's a good band on, on side because I feel like in Lakeside Village also, just when it comes to like connecting those ciphers as the Hermit, it's it could be tough. Then again, we we're not even sure where we'd rank him just yet because I want to see him like put on the highest of high uh, situations. So maybe when it comes to the finals of IVA, uh, who knows, a Hermit might come out. But coming into this one, you know what? There's still interesting choices. You can you can go for a rescuer. You can go for a kiter. It seems like a toy merchant will be picked up because you saw how well the toy merchant was able to aid that prospector. Um, let's see if they're gonna go for a harasser or a rescuer. It seems like Zed is gonna lock in her signature mercenary. Definitely understandable choice there. You always kind of want to have a rather secure rescuer, and definitely with a mercenary in tow, he can take as much damage as possible with the lay time and you know definitely can secure a rescue on a chair rather safely compared to other rescue type characters so definitely mm -hmm. appreciate that coming out from ZT they don't want to risk anything in this situation where they are in the lead so mm -hmm. for sure again yeah and I think it was uh it was uh also like the showing of the mercenary in the the previous game that just showed I mean yeah the delayed damage the rescue it's just one of if you say dream which is one of the st like the most stable hunter and competitive i would have to say mercenary is also very stable when it comes to being the best rescuer in the game yes sure the decoding uh could suffer uh but i mean that's all you want in a rescuer so it seems like uh yeah they're really just, uh, being sure that they'll able to lock in with this and now let's look at the next band being the prize pector so i this is definitely agreeable i think seichu also knows how the how, what the what the powers of a prospector could be especially on the hands of Nehru and we have seen ZT rock that prospector time and time again so just banning it out respecting it good choice for Seichu definitely I can appreciate that ban as well because we do know that harassers obviously are going to be annoying and with Prospector specifically his magnets recharge rather fast and uh -huh. with those magnets it can be so annoying especially if you're going to go like as a one chip hunter specifically mm -hmm. so definitely understand that but just in general such a nuisance to deal with so I really appreciate that um we are yeah. going to continue to wait for the other picks and bans here but Oh, definitely want to capitalize on that toy merchant pick again. Once again, she can have that catapult to use for herself or her fellow survivors as well. But hold the phone. We are going to be psycho seeing psychologists here. Mm -hmm. Definitely rather interesting pick. What do you think, Poch? Yeah, so it seems like um, still going for like a double rescuer lineup, but having the psychologist here could actually help them out. Uh, a lot especially in a big map because i think yeah it was skyfall on the gravekeeper that was downed early so at least the psychologist she could tank three hits if she's not going to be the one who's going to be chased first she could heal anyone to go for a rebound rescue so i'm agreeing with this uh type of uh pick so far in zt's side i just want them to round it off with maybe like a forward or a, or, or a harasser because we have seen how well a double rescuer lineup worked out but I really think it was Nehru's prospector that really turned the tides in their favor with how long uh, he was able to kite out um, the the hunter. So uh, looking solid so far. We're just going to have to wait and see uh, what the last pick would be on the side. Uh, well, the last ban on the side of Seichu would be. Yeah, definitely. Um, as you said, this is such a big map and with psychologists roaming free and unbothered can just, you know, Wi-Fi heal from across the map and just right. entirely take on a health state that would have rather been crucial if you're the hunter. So definitely puts a little bit of a damper in your pressure if she is just there on the, the line. So we definitely appreciate that going to also be a rather safe rescuer if she does need to be if she mm -hmm. still has her stress so there's a lot of little situations where she can be so helpful correct so it seems like um the next possible ban i mean you could offer forward you could go for patient you go for acrobat there's still a lot of options for seichu to choose from and it seems like he's gonna go for the patient ban which uh yeah especially if you're in tandem with the psychologist you definitely don't want to give them that buff and in a map like this, he has interesting jump spots also when it comes to the big rock and also the small boat. So I think uh, eliminating the patient here is actually good. But now I gotta, uh, I'm really interested to find out what Night Rain's gonna choose because are, are they gonna double down on going for the rescuer lineup or like are they gonna pick 
uh, a kicker of a decoder because i really i strongly believe that the meta is shifting that you need to have a harasser in a competitive lineup to be able to compete with the best of the best and you need to provide a little bit of that fear for the hunter to look behind himself be like is it safe for me to chair is it safe for me to continue the pursuit here so uh we're just gonna have to wait and see what zt will be coming up with yeah, definitely interesting. We are going to see a little bit of a slightly defensive showing, but Whoa. wow, we're going to see, as you said, a harasser, mm -hmm. and the batter's going to be locked in. I do think this is interesting. He can continuously pick up his balls and use them to be um, a lot of annoyance towards the hunter, <laughs> so it's definitely not really dependent on a recharge, but just being able to go and pick your ball up, so definitely appreciate mm. that can balloon rescue if needed and also just generally support his fellow survivors in continuing on their kite mm -hmm. i have to ask that i mean the voice that you're you're channeling right now i think you're speaking for all the hunter mains out there which which hunter do you mean if i may ask um i am not much of a hunter player anymore but when i did play i used to be a geisha and oh, an axe boy nice. main oh let's go a lot of robbie mains out there a lot of loyal followers of the robbie main but geisha is always a tough uh call to go for especially like in rank just auto ban geisha if you want to just try and survive as much as possible because i i felt a little like you know i think they'd appreciate like banning the the or uh, eliminating the harassers and all that so i think all the hunter mains also out there feel how you're how you're echoing their, their their voice right now but going after a batter especially like in certain spots here let's say like a columns area where you're running a straight line that's gonna be a little tough and i feel like uh, seichu is gonna have to pick up after the toys that he leaves behind here not from the toy merchant but also the batter and just clean up everything he can for these uh these resources not to be renewed anymore yeah, definitely. Um, also want to highlight that with the Toy Merchant and the Mercenary on the field, they could do a potential Jesus. item swap situation yeah. as well. So there's a lot of utility in this lineup, but we're going to have to see if it pays off in the sense that they do need to last in kiting. So they mm. can have all of this like decent decoding speed, well rather regular decoding speed sans the Mercenary, but will it mm. really make sense or pay off if someone goes oh. down super early? Mm -hmm. yeah it's a it's a tough call right in theory it's supposed to be great it's supposed to work out um when it comes to uh the type of uh the synergy that's brought to the table but you know what it's gonna be hard especially in a big map like this you don't priest this you don't have anyone to close out the distance well the i mean the the toy merchant can bring up an express power like just goes for the the gliding but now we see that Seichu's Sculptor, the one you were building him up from the start, is going to get picked here. So it's still going to be really tough for the survivors to go after. But, I mean, it's pretty well-rounded. Uh, even though the batter is there, I mean, the statues can block. We'll see how this one's going to go. Because I would have to say, the Sculptor has kind of fallen down in terms of priority when it comes to competitive. Yeah, but you gotta keep in mind that this is Seichu's bread and butter and has gotten these decisive 4Ks when mm -hmm. the situation called for it. So mm -hmm. definitely just gonna have to wait and see to how this match will play out. If you are the sculptor, you want to target the psychologist. You can yes. utilize those statues to get rid of her stress rather quickly if you have the perfect position for your statues. So mm -hmm. then once that stress is completely gone, she is just a, simply a walking target that really needs to rely on her raw kiting ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely want to be able to target that. Uh, yeah, Shadow would be the main priority to go after first and just avoid the batter as much as possible to start things off because you want to build up that presence to get the tier 2 statues also maybe try to clean up as much as possible when it comes to seeing the toy merchants catapults we are going to head on over to the spawn locations they're playing a little bit of a chess here toy merchant you gotta sit down uh oh class is about to begin okay they're just gonna go for the straight line oh they're not gonna go for the straight line i don't know if <laughs> this night rain wanted to breach the wall that we usually see in lakeside but say you're just making sure all right you breach my defenses i'm gonna spawn right here near the small boat and in between the big boat you know honestly i think night rain was playing tetris in their mind so for <laughs> t-spin he's trying to <laughs> yeah, he could have been yeah he could have been 
<laughs> we're gonna see Sei Chu be placed right in the center and you know Shadow once again is going to be right in that area so definitely going to be a priority pick in terms of targets so gonna have to see if Shadow can really kite out this sculptor mm -hmm. so now let's see here ladies and gentlemen with the second half of round number two Sei Chu on his calling card of a character going for the the sculptor here trying to not waste any time just gonna go for shadow immediately as uh Sato has mentioned yeah definitely when you're the sculptor you want to get the psychologist down can have that ability to do so with the statues we're gonna see psychologists try to get off of this small boat area it's gonna take a hit reducing her stress a little bit but she still has more stress to play with so we're going mm -hmm. to transition away from the small boat gonna take another hit and now her stress is going to be completely negated and she mm -hmm. is going to be a walking target Ooh, and also eating so much hits here. So Shadow not doing too well at the start of this game. So it's, let's see if how, how well he's going to consider. Uh, considering this area is kind of cramped, it's going to be hard for you to sidestep these statues. He's already got the chisel, and now he's going to try to go for the basic hit. Psychologist has to eat the basic hit from the transition away. Uh, Cypher progress, I'm not sure looking too well since the first mo a minute has just passed. So now it seems like Shadow just leading him towards a corner area of this map just to provide a little more support for them to be able to be unharassed while decoding. Yeah, definitely going to see this attempt at avoiding line of sight, which is definitely going to be a hindrance and putting a good placement of these statues going to be going back and forth with this palette. But the blink comes into play and psychologists will be going down regardless. So definitely wanting to do that decisive hit and get rid of the psychologist as soon as possible to apply as much pressure as possible. Yeah, Seichu didn't want to waste any time. He knew that, you know, this pallet drop could last a while, even though, you know, he did have some statues to try and down her with, but just already automatically used the blink for the early down. He knows what's at stake, and it seems like run on the batter will be already making his presence felt here, eating that regular hit, and now let's see how the support is going to help them out. Ooh! Definitely going to utilize that ball and completely just uh, make it so Seichu has a little bit of a harder time here going to try to really commit to this um, support but Batter is going to also be one hit down and Psychologist really just needs to get away from this area but now she is going to be basic hit and going to see the chair for a second time if the Batter is going to play this out conservatively which it seems like he is. You called it, Sato. Seichu just running circles around these survivors. Three ciphers still remain. Batter can no longer attempt to rescue here because he's one chip damage away from falling out. This is what Seichu can bring to the table, right? Conservative play, very precise with his statues. Already at full presence with three ciphers remaining. It's going to be tough for the psychologist to even consider being rescued because he doesn't have that much to off, but it seems like Zed is up for the challenge. He will be going for the rescue at this point. Yeah, definitely knowing that Mercenary is a really secure rescuer, but needs to really just avoid all of these statue hits and trying to secure as much health as he can in this situation. Going to be going back and forth with these mind games, going to wonder Ooh. if he's actually going to rescue the hit. And Psychologist is going to be fighting for her last effort in attempt to kite out this remaining Tide Turner. Yeah, and now able to provide some, oh, uh, what's that? Just buy some time here for Seichu to drop down, uh, well, break that pallet, but Psychologist's last effort already popped, so it seems like uh, Seichu is going to lock in his first survivor here. So this is uh, actually a great start. Three ciphers still remain and three survivors left. So let's see how uh, the survivors of, uh, of ZT will try to pull this one out of the fire because the survivors of GH did exactly that going up against the clerk. Yeah, you have to wonder if that was the right choice to rescue in that situation because that means there is one tie turner off of the table and now Mercenary is one chip damage away from getting hit here. So we are going to see that the um, Sculptor is going to be changing targets onto the batter full health. Well, no, not full health, uh, slightly chip damage. But anyway, we are going to see him utilize that catapult to wow. go onto that ship. Gain so much distance in doing so, and now we're going to see Seichu just switching targets knowing that Boat is such a hassle to chase mm -hmm. someone on. Yeah, and now, actually safe to say, Sado, that we will see a game number three, because even if they do get three survivors out, it will be a tie pushing for a, round, a game number three. But now we see that Zed is going to be locked on here by Seichu, so uh, already at full presence, Zed has to be careful. Not being too uh, cautious by using these elbow pads, doesn't want to wait for the last possible minute. He's going to try and go for it again, but no, unfortunately, tried to turn the corner there. Uh, Seichu was ready, and he had no more elbow pads to expend. 
And now a second survivor on a rocket chair. So Seichu just doing some cleanup here when it comes to getting more points for uh, his team. Definitely a little bit painful to watch there as he utilized his last resource and went straight into a dead zone area. So definitely not the most ideal situation, but we are going to see that Seichu is going to utilize that overhead uh, view. But knowing where that batter is, we're going to see the batter switch off and... I'm gonna wonder if they're going to actually commit to rescuing or not, or simply buying tinnitus and buying time in this situation. At this point, I think, yeah, they need to rescue because two ciphers remain and both of them are in this area. They have to make this rescue happen. Oh, unfortunate there. Once the mercenary left the rocket chair, the hit connected. And now Seichu just playing it very conservatively. He knows that he doesn't want to lose sight of this mercenary. He's going to try and go for that chisel damage on the batter. But luckily for Run, he was able to go out a little bit unscathed. But, you know, we have an injured batter with three balls. But you do have a toy merchant also with that magic wand. Uh, just to provide that support. But it seems like uh, Seichu is on his way to get more than three, uh, more than just a tie here. Definitely. I guess you can say the saving grace is that they were able to rescue the mercenary after half, but there needed to be support for him to rebound Kite as he had no more elbow pads to use, but we're going to have these statues try to pressure run off the cypher Whoa. as the toy merchant is going to just not commit to this rescue either. Actually, she utilized that, up, yeah. that, up, <laughs> that up, uh, hill glide there and is going to take the hit and the rescue goes off and the tie turner is in effect now. Oh, and Mercenary does have the magic wand to use. And now it seems like Seichu, you know what, the last F, I mean, has to pop that last effort. But the Tide Turner is still in effect here. So uh, Zed could still buy some time here since there is that delayed damage. She just had to be able to watch out for these statues. But as I say that, eats a statue hit. Zed's going to try to camp out this pallet drop here. But no, forcing Seichu to actually walk through it and try to go for a regular hit. And Zed... Still buying time here. These two ciphers have still stayed in this uh, remaining area. So let's see how much longer Zed can uh, continue this kite. Yeah, amazing. Buying so much time for the survivors to work on these cypher machines. There is one cypher remaining now well over 50%. So if he can kite this out, there is a chance that they can pop it before. But we do see that he gets hit and that delayed damage is going to buy time. But Run is in the area to try to help with the support here. Make sure he doesn't oh! get down. <laughs> Wow, amazing. We're going to see this batter oh! recommit, and the cypher is primed, and we do see that detention is propped. What a beautiful sequence there by Run. Able to hit him, hit the mark straight onto the head there, dropping down the mercenary. And now Seichu is scrambling to at least get a tie game here. But Run able to fall back and forth here. So Seichu able to hit him with a statue, so with, without line of sight. So now we see that Blink will be... Oh, it's Teleport or Blink? Tele Blink will be ready. So Seichu just waiting for the opportune moment to down this batter. This batter still has three balls to use. But now we see that he's not even in that area anymore. Chisel's going to spot him out. And now Seichu wants to be able to down this batter before he can make it to the dungeon. Definitely going to be one chip damage away from getting downed here. Seichu really needs to just confirm this kill onto Run here. It's seeming like Run is in kind of a dead zone area and it's only a matter of time and he will be hit and sent back to the manor. So definitely a really decisive tie here in this situation with Seichu getting that tie. That's definitely a win condition for Seichu since he did not allow any of them to tie up with the 3-1 that the survivors did gain but all, like like we said about gh zt also has that fact that x factor to bring to the table they can roll with the punches pretty well because unfortunately um it was the psychologist that didn't have the best start and the best start being 98 seconds that's still a good rebound kite on the side of shadow and you got to give it up to run to you know kiting for triple digits along with that mercenary so an excellent showing on the survivor side, but it's Seichu Sculptor that came out on top on this one, Sato. Yeah, definitely. I uh, did have to say, you know, predicted the um, psychologist being targeted out first. And you can only do so much without your stress relief, because after that, again, it is just raw kiting of the ability to be respectable in the sense that mm -hmm. even 60 seconds against a top tier hunter like this is an achievement in its own. So really appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, a lot of people in chat popping off for Seichu. Uh, you know, still getting the, the minimum condition for them to at least hold on to this lead. So round one goes to ZT, round two uh, goes to GH. Round number three, it's still up in the air because we are not going to go for points. We're going to go for round wins. So it's still, it can go any which way. So I'm excited to see 
how uh, GH and ZT will approach round number three because one will have to give uh, and one will give way to the winner to move on in this tournament and one will be heading to the lower bracket. Yeah, definitely. So really do appreciate that showing on both sides here. So we are going to see a rather decisive match coming up. Rather excited for that too, Podge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with that being said, we are going to take a very short break, ladies and gentlemen. When we return, it is going to be round number three between GH and ZP. Stay silent when you hear this sound. The static particles begin to vibrate with the sound waves, indicating they have acquired energy. It may be a tiny amount, yet it's enough to straighten out my thoughts. But the energy can also be huge. As the setting sun shone upon the final rest, I saw a musical note glimmering in gold dancing in the air, just as they expected. The movement spread my life energy and pushed me up a pedestal until I could smell the aroma of talent in the air. The aroma was me, but it slowly faded with time. Once it faded, it cast me into the abyss where the light from my eyes extinguished. The light shines through my fingers and onto the white keys as I continue writing, hoping the melody points me in a direction. In the reflection, I see what should have happened. He glows golden, just like they first expected. Pushes the world to absurdity. Do you believe? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the final game of GH versus ZT to start off the playoffs here at IVA. Sada Coil and Podge Spice at your service for tonight. And Sada Coil, it's, it's going to be an intense one because uh, GH was able to, you know, fulfill the win condition in round number two. And round number three, it's still up in the air. Yeah, definitely. We're going to have to keep our minds open on who might be taking the total win here because it's just been a constant back and forth. And when you have your expectations, you just get completely blown over. So mm -hmm. definitely just have to see how they pull out the stops and trying to secure as much points as possible from both sides. Mm -hmm. And it seems like our next map is going to be played in the Arms Factory, a small compact map. One of my favorite maps, I have to say, because... I don't get lost as much. Like those were the one of the first maps maps I've actually learned in the game. I'm like, yeah, it's not so big. Uh, what are your thoughts on Arms Factory? Um, I like the snowballs on Arms Factory. Or, oh, yeah. it's Leos, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Arms Factory is interesting in that you can kite that factory very well if you are a survivor and can be rather annoying if you're playing. Yeah, fighter. that's true. You know, depends and on triple what pallet, you're yeah. Playing. And triple pallet no longer be triple pallet in the new patch right so we gotta we gotta 
enjoy the the mill part of arms factory as much as we can at this point uh so that will be the the, the map we're gonna play at and it seems like seichu will be hunting uh for uh for his team to start things off which i would say you know what that's pretty good because he's kind of in that uh, uh, he's still in that he's still warmed up but now it seems like you gotta respect ban that sculptor you gotta respect ban that bonbon at this point especially in a map like arms factory Right, definitely need to get rid of, you know, He was really able to capitalize on having that Bon Bon and that Sculptor into play, so definitely should respect Ban those as, you know, he can just really pull out the stops and gain a lot of points with that if they are not careful. So mm -hmm. kind of want to play it safe and not allow him this opportunity to play someone he can dominate with and is super comfortable with. Mm -hmm. yeah just get rid of the yeah as you mentioned the bread and butter the go-to hunters and you still have two two hunters to go for but it seems like the bands are going to come out seer dancer and mercenary dancer seems to be like the substitute for priestess because the maps that we've been playing at well the first one priestess was priority back, but lakeside arms factor you don't necessarily have to bring priestess into the mix so a good start for uh, the bands on Seichu's side. So we're just going to have to wait and see. If the survivors are going to roll the dice with the two... No, we're not. <laughs> They're not even going to attempt to it. So Bon Bon and uh, Sculptor are going to get banned. Leaving Seichu some options here. I mean, he could bring out the Clerk. He could bring out uh, Geisha is pretty good also. He could bring out Dream Witch if he has one. Uh, but it's still going to be very telling uh, depending on the survivor lineup. And it seems like shadow not wasting any time he wants to lock in that prospector and we're gonna see a barmaid come into the mix yeah definitely it said time and time again barmaid is rising in the meta in the sense that when you have the hunters locking in dream witch or the clerk she can be so annoying can allow her mind to heal other people and just completely negate the pressure that they had so definitely mm -hmm. can appreciate that and trying to you know kind of cut down on Seichu's options here. Um, mm -hmm. The side of a harasser kind of makes it a little bit harder if they were to go, let's say, like you kind of were throwing out there a geisha because as a one, um, one hit hunter mm -hmm. who can have a lot of mobility, that done with the remnants can just completely negate any kind of mobility and help mm -hmm. with the harassing and support with their fellow teammates. Yeah, I think uh, that definitely paints a good picture of this uh how the harassment that is brought to the table the prospector and and something that i also have to uh take note of chat if you guys have just gotten here welcome once again to iva keep commenting down below for you guys to claim those loyalty rewards because we are going to give uh giveaways for the top 10 uh commenters and also uh there is an nm bot for the nm coins for you guys to claim some amazing prizes even a vip um, a VIP chance or a, a VIP seat for the grand finals of IVA, and also shout outs to at Sunny Kim on Instagram because she's giving away S tier skins, uh, two S tier skins and one A tier skin. If you guys follow the mechanics posted on Nello Mello's Facebook page, that would be great because I did see Good Job Man has just joined the chat. There's a lot of people also joining the chat. We're a uh, triple digit strong, so keep sharing the stream, keep uh, promoting this chat, this uh, promoting this tournament. And keep cheering on your favorite teams. Enchantress yeah, band, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no problem. It's really important to point these things out. There is a lot of rewards you guys can really capitalize on. So definitely keep in mind what Potch said. But we are going to be going back to these bands here. And rather interesting that they really just do not want to deal with another harasser. When, again, it is interesting to think that they might have two harassers. But let's put that aside yeah. for now. They are going to put in the first officer. So... I think he is a rather stable um, rescuer mm. in terms of being able to utilize that pocket watch and can afford to take a hit with that pocket watch and even utilizing it for, for the first time his decoding speed increases so definitely going to push towards this decoding cipher rush if possible. Yeah, uh, it seems uh, this is my take on it. If he's banning the Enchantress, I think he might be thinking or considering clerk because i mean enchantress could just stun her out of that recording state uh just to make sure and the dancer as well single hit hunter also does not like the seer mercenary that just as a safety ban for everything so let's see if uh, he, uh seichu will uh go that route because you don't see that much enchantress priority bans usually just 
you know what? Like at the last ban. All right, six person ban. Let's just ban the Enchantress. Here, it was kind of a bit of a foresight to ban this Enchantress. And considering ZT, yes, they like going for stunners. Not sure if Enchantress is in their wheelhouse because it's usually, yeah, batter, prospector, kind of a bit of that forward acrobat as well. Uh, but yeah, as Dan over there in chat said, Age of the Prospector and also Dancer uh, is a hot commodity for today. So they are getting banned out. So we're going to see what the last pick or what the last ban on Seichu would be. Yeah, for sure. Um, definitely a little bit concerned. While well, they did have the first officer who can be a secure rescuer. Um, wow, they're gonna ban out the antiquarian. <laughs> gonna completely just, you know, get rid of all these annoying harassers. So definitely mm -hmm. interesting. Um, would have really liked to see the antiquarian, yeah. you know, off the table now. <laughs> um, I know. But yeah, we don't have um, the security of having this like delayed damage that comes from having a mercenary on the field. So we're gonna have to just see if this might come to bite them in the butt in that sense mm -hmm. but looking pretty yeah. good on the side of uh decoding progress on the survivor line so far right like you don't have a right. necessarily well i mean the first officer is the slowest among these guys right. um but i would have to agree with you like i didn't know i wanted the antiquarian until it got banned it's like oh dang you know reverse psychology like no we're not gonna have the antiquarian what i was ex i wasn't expecting them to actually consider antiquarian but now it's on the table now that it's off the table i'm like darn really wish we saw that um but last pick it might be a little tough uh to call out i'm not sure it want to go if what kind of uh yeah will he go for a rescuer will he go for a stunner a stunner slash harasser will he go for a decoder because i mean we have seen some you know explorer coming here if ever because there's a lot of grassy patches but you know what the batter is still up here you still have forward. You still have a lot of uh, options on the side of ZT. And also, what Seichu is thinking. Because we said, like, you know what? Uh, a Clerk is still here. Dream Witch is still very viable. We've seen YMM go with Nyad in later rounds, too. So maybe he might be considering that. But a thief. And I'm going <laughs> to... Oh wow, a thief. I actually kind of saw it a little ahead of the time. I was waiting for Sadow's reaction. But give me your initial thoughts on seeing a thief here. Um, I can't say I was expecting it at all. We're gonna just have to trust that Nate Ray knows what he's doing and can utilize his flashlights and the stoplights really well in that yes. sense. Um, mm -hmm. not a traditional pick in any means, but no. um, not sure if I would pick this as a priority, like as in the sense that there are a lot of other survivor picks that can play better but to put that aside we are going to be seeing hermit in to iva for the first time say to really going to pull out the stops to try to completely Jeez. negate the cypher rush lineup yeah and considering how small this is gonna be well the map wise right like he's gonna have control like he's gonna see where people are moving he's he has excellent mobility I'm excited to see this because this is a match that I wanted to see with a lot of pressure. And you know, ZT being one of the creative survivors here, they're going to try to find ways to distribute the damage and also try and kite as long as possible. Because if you're on this Hermit, you want to be able to control that Cypher Rush. And luckily for him, there's not much decoders on this lineup, if not at all. So uh, he's going to have a little bit of a leisure going for that for early chase. But then again, you don't want to be able to spread out your damage a little too much and and go for um yeah just just try and distribute everything because you do have a barmaid here so a barmaid is a healer so that kind of counters the the, da the distributed damage so we're just gonna have to wait and see and trust that seichu knows what he's doing with this hermit pick because this was a pick that was this hunter was banned on zt side uh in in lakeside village yeah and they are going to on location picks here um gonna definitely put the pace of the match with what they decide to go <laughs> um we are going to be playing chess as you mentioned tetris before, as the, mm -hmm. or yeah maybe tetris this time we'll just have to see, yeah i, I just i tetris. just feel like the last one is like if, if, if it was like a like a, a single block and then all of a sudden you switch it last minute and oh darn it i didn't get tetris <laughs> and it's like oh no. oh no it's an oc's a person with the oc's worst nightmare of in tetris it's like it doesn't line up but <laughs> We are going to see that Shadow is going to stay as far, far away as possible from this Hermit. Great showing here because it's going to be pretty tough to chase any of these guys. So 
We're just going to have to see how uh, the Hermit will be coming into the mix. And this is going to be the debut of the Hermit on stream because you did say in the qualifying matches, the Hermit did come out. But now we're going to see it in action here at IVA. Round number three, first half. Finally, we are going to be seeing Seichu immediately just decide to connect his ciphers. He needs to do this decisively in order to stall out the cipher progress here. But we are going to see him pass the factory area and go towards the direction of another survivor we do see a good showing on them trying to transition away but the barmaid is spotted out really quickly here and uh -oh. gonna be interesting no he decides to go for run instead rather more vulnerable target and the, he does take a hit oh my god that was not the best start for run you know, it didn't he was able to try and hide it out but the mind game's not there able to give him that blue spark so now it's going to be tough there's not going to be any distributed damage for at least five seconds so uh everyone's going to try and take this hit but i don't know if it's going to be worth it because i think he's still going to fall down i'm terrible with math so i'm not sure about the distribution of this but we're going to see if uh run is going to be able to get a magnet onto him so able to get that let's see if a stun will be inbound oh the stun did happen but on Oh my god, both sides and the flywheel as well, Sato! No. Wow! Oh my god, back and back and back and forth! <laughs> mm -hmm. Constantly showing this action, going crazy here, but we do see that Blink was the decisive hit and lock in for the Prospector on the chair for the first time. So, um, honestly, all the pressure is on the survivors right now. The Prospector could have kited for longer, but mm -hmm. so early in this match with the Cypher you know, being pressured by the connection is going to be a little bit tough here, but First Officer is mm -hmm. gearing in for this rescue already. Uh-oh, able to spot out Zed while he was in the hypnotic state. And Yard's going to get a terror shock, but luckily it was distributed. But still, what an amazing showing by Seichu, able to just dodge that first hit. So it's actually a little scary. Seichu now, I'm trying to move on away. Chasing Zed now, wants to be able to go for this Prospector, run, running back into the ruins. So just non-stop action from Bell to Whistle here, uh, Sato. Yeah, definitely, Prospector needs to buy a lot more time than he originally did. Gonna utilize that Repulse to gain a lot of distance, but no, he's gonna constantly try to go back and forth, but that Red Pulse does wow. make it so that he takes that hit. But mm -hmm. well, we are gonna be seeing the strength of the distribution here, but Prospector mm -hmm. is going to be really close to going down at this rate. Yeah, so I mean, the distribution's great, but this is also damage on Seichu. Like, he's investing damage after the kite of this Prospector, but nice sidesteps on run side. But no, the blue stun able to stop him from going through, uh, creating more distance after that window vault. Now, run is back on the rocket chair here. Four ciphers still remain. This, the Hermit again could just stall the cipher for days here, Sap. So. Definitely, and with Thief also on the floor due to that polarity sharing, mm -hmm. it's the pressure is all on the survivors again. We do have First Officer with one more pocket watch, and then the Barmaid with uh, another wine in tow, but we are going to see that Barmaid is going to be capitalizing Ooh. and trying to go in for this rescue, going to take the hit, and now Spectre needs to buy a lot of time on his rebound kite. Whoa! able to get the the hit but unfortunate unable to get that attack recovery animation going on Bra barmaid is down prospector going through the pallet that was so close dropping another uh it's that mag well uh just electric charge here and now the prospector at least able to share that damage still able to move on away but these are a lot of damage on the board for the side of Seichu here. Nice positioning of the orb here, able to close out that distance, but run able to move on away, but unfortunately the blink able to land the terror shock. Yeah, the decisive blink really just secured that hit onto the prospector. He will be seeing the chair for the second time. The saving grace is that the survivors do want to play this out a little bit more conservatively, trying to heal each other up because knowing that they are injured is going to be a hassle in the long run so definitely really vital in this situation prospector is going to be sent back to the manor as the hermit tries to find his next target here but the cypher progress is rather terrible i might add <laughs> i mean i i would say it's this is normal for a hermit match because he could just control it like crazy right yeah. so it's 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 what's tough is that the resources are are, are at a horrible state because Man, this is a lot of ciphers that they have to pop, but we've seen ZT come back from different situations, but this is the first time we're seeing the, the Hermit come out and play. We are seeing that the Pocket Watch is going to be used. Will Seichu choose to commit? It seems like Night Rain already setting up his uh, his 
his <laughs> his flashlight here. And Seichu not wasting any time, just trying to get rid of it. Another flashlight is going to be set here. He knows that he has the time because four Cyphers still remain. Thief eats that hit, trying to just set up these spotlights, but Seichu is going to have none of it. Definitely gonna really capitalize on getting this thief hit with a uh, double stun situation. Gonna be choosing an interesting path here as this is a rather strong kiting area. So gonna just have to wait and see what the thief has in mind. He's doing a good job so far of keeping the hermit at bay, but gonna have to try to Whoa. use his flashlights, but gonna be hit through the window. Ooh, he gets immobilized by the flashlight. So great stuff on the side of the thief. And we see that the Thief able to at least, you know, transition away. But Seichu already knows the Cypher, two Cyphers have been popped. He's connecting them once again. He's going to go back into the bird's eye view and gives him another shock there. So he is sharing damage with the barmaid. So the barmaid has to be very careful. He's going to try and kite out for a while, but he just drags him back there. And Seichu downing the Thief. Definitely, we are going to see the thief going into the chair for the first time. And I do want to highlight, folks, if you don't understand what the first officer just did right now by going into the locker, he was trying to get rid of his polarity. So mm -hmm. that is something you can utilize against the hermit to work towards your advantage given the situation. But regardless, we are going to see the first officer go in for this rescue, perhaps. Oof. It's going to take that hit and it's going to make it so much harder to potentially go in for this rescue. Ooh, he also has perfume to try and... Uh... Bait out some movement here, but I think he's going to have to go for the rescue. But the Terror Shock again. Two Terror Shocks in a row by Seichu. He is on fire tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Definitely showing the strength of Hermit in this situation, allowing them to get another survivor on the chair. The second progress was decent given that there's a certain situation that's going on at the moment, but now all of a sudden, Barmaid needs to make something happen here. She does have a syringe. She can self-heal herself, but... Her fellow survivors are on the chair. You need to fight for dungeon at this rate, and it will be really hard with the hermit being able to stun you out. Yeah, and you don't have any polarity to share with, so it's going to be tough, but I think that's what Shadow is just going to try to go for. He's going to prime the heal up just to make sure uh, he can just try and eat at least. Uh, I don't know if he can't even hit it. He can't eat a regular hit for sure, but it seems like Shadow is just going to run straight into Seichu here, and it seems like he's going to heal up fully uh with that syringe but no the stun is gonna happen gg is definitely gonna be called seichu what a beast on this hermit definitely for a debut of the hermit showing up in iva i'd have to say that's a really good display of his skill and the strength and just entirely wiping out the survivors they put up a really good fight but it just wasn't mm -hmm. enough in this situation yeah which makes me think also and uh maybe chat you can chime in as well with the. Uh... The thief pick, I know it's a comfort pick, but I mean, you could try going for acrobat forward, just to, something to transition away from the, the hermit, right? Because if you plant those those flashlights, you're kind of playing into that area of vicinity where he could just hit you with his, his, his orbs and not creating, not really moving away from that distance. So uh, I think this is also a learning experience for not just us, but also the survivors of teams out there because... Hermit is still being tested, and he's still being, you know, the, the, the strength of the Hermit is still being utilized. But Thief, we've already known he's very established in the scene as not the most conventional survivor. So it begs the question, if, if he picked a different character, would we see a different outcome? Because this is the best possible outcome that Seichu could ever get. Definitely. Putting down those flashlights wasted a little bit of time that you can could have been utilized in creating that distance. And I would have rather seen um, a survivor that could survive, provide a little bit more support who is an entomologist being able to kind right. of support mm -hmm. with her bee, which mm -hmm. is just a hassle for Hermit to deal with. With or just like a patient or something that can prolong that kite with his hooks. So Correct. Definitely Correct. interesting. I couldn't agree with you more uh, because you know meta is there for a reason. Yes, you know it was kind of hype seeing that thief, but ultimately we want to be able to see the best of the best here in IVA, and uh, there is a standard that you know these survivors have to go through. And uh, the thief, unfortunately, kind of showed that you know what there are some glaring issues bringing him out in competitive. You know what. Uh, especially in this hermit matchup so if i learn anything tonight that uh thief does it bodes well and when it comes to setting up the flashlights especially when you have a fully fed hermit that is chasing you and do not you gotta respect ban that hermit on seichu's side because two terror shocks in a row the control he has on this character it's really insane so 
here we have it ladies and gentlemen this is the score for the first half of round number three it is gh that is leading the dance now at this point so it's going to be up to either miko or kuga to bring it back for his team so i believe at this point we're going to take a very short break but when we return it's going to be the conclusion of round number three between gh and zt Stay silent when you hear this sound. The static particles begin to vibrate with the sound waves, indicating they have acquired energy. It may be a tiny amount, yet it's enough to straighten out my thoughts. But the energy can also be huge. As the setting sun shone upon the final rest, I saw a musical note glimmering in dancing in the air, just as they expected. The movement spread my life energy and pushed me up a pedestal until I could smell the aroma of talent in the air. The aroma was me, but it slowly faded with time. Once it faded, it cast me into the abyss where the light from my eyes extinguished. The light shines through my fingers and onto the white keys as I continue writing, hoping the melody points me in a direction. In the reflection, I see what should have happened. He glows golden, just like they first expected. Pushes the world to absurdity. Do you believe? We are heading right back into it here with me, Sadako, and my co-caster, Poch Spice. Right now, we just witnessed Seichu with a really decisive debut of Hermit. Definitely interesting as the survivors try to figure out and familiarize themselves with the Hunter's playstyle, mm -hmm. but for not as he was really able to secure that, that, <laughs> that win there. So definitely yeah. interesting to see. When you mentioned familiarize yourself, I was familiarizing myself to how to commentate it because I'm not gonna lie, Sarah, that was the like, the first time. Like since it was the debut, uh, I know in IVL we're not they're not allowed to use him just yet. Uh, the most experience we get is actually talking about it with friends and also uh, and also like using Hermit and also going up against Hermit. But this is actually a very special night for IVA because this is the first time we saw Hermit. So. Uh, Initial thoughts so far, Sado, and seeing Hermit. What did you think of it? What kind of what kind of thoughts did you get? I mean, he's scary as heck for me. Oh yeah, for sure. That just ability to capitalize on the lack of decoding speed due to the connection mm -hmm. and those polarity stuns and just mm -hmm. everything about his kit in the right hands is so detrimental to the survivors if they don't know what they're doing. Like, mm -hmm. kind of to like compare it to like photographer matches in the sense oh, that you really yeah. need to be on it with the terms of like having your um your four stack know what to do in what situation and then the distribution of like 
like fragmented health states, it's rather interesting, and mm -hmm. you need to play it safely and decisively. Yeah, uh, shout outs to Red. We were able to talk to him a little bit backstage. Also, it's like you really need to be thinking as one to how to be able to share the damage and know when to get rid of the damage. And it's, uh, yeah, I think everyone, the whole community, the whole Identity 5 nation is still trying to figure out the best way to utilize the Hermit and also the best way to go up against the Hermit. Because, I mean, on paper, yeah, you want decoders, you want healers, right? But, I mean, you still have, like, the, the, the bird's eye view of the ball and able to stun, so you still need a good kiter if, if that's the case, right? Especially a full presence. So, uh, he's still a beast. I can't wait to see more of the Hermit match. Maybe we're going to see another one come out because I believe it is going to be, uh, who's it going to be? Miko that will be coming out to, to hunt for his team. Yeah, I'm really excited to see how this is going to go down with the, the survivors of GH going to be on the field now, going to try to capitalize on Seichu's really strong victory in the last match. So definitely going to have to see they, how they set the tempo in this situation. Mm-hmm. Especially when it comes to the bans, maybe they're gonna safety ban that clerk just so, or they might go up against them because they did a very decisive win over Miko's clerk. So if they want to roll the dice on on that clerk, by all means. Then now we see Seer, Dancer, and Mercenary. Uh, yeah, Dancer has been uh, priority picked and priority banned throughout this matchup. So uh, I'm actually this is one of the learnings I got from uh, tonight. Like yeah, Dancer is one of the hot commodities here, and now we are gonna see. Uh, bon Bon being uh, negated as well as the clerk, so it seems like Miko is going to have to reach deeper into the hunter pool here as we do see that the survivors, Nehru and Skyfall, pick in the forward and the acrobat. Yeah, definitely more traditional picks in the sense that they are kind of the universal um, like fragments of teams that we generally would see instead of like the dancer we've been seeing a lot of tonight so can appreciate acrobat being here has a lot of utilization of his bombs whether it is to kite or even using that ability canceling bomb to assist someone so appreciate him can be a backup rescue if need be too so mm -hmm. definitely a good choice a solid choice to have on a lineup like this mm -hmm. so uh, just to note, ladies and gentlemen, if uh, talking about win conditions here, ZT needs to get, well, Miko needs to get four survivor kill for them to win. Because if they get any lower, that means GH wins this round. If they don't, they at least tie this round, comes down to points, and ZT does uh, max out points if that's the case. So a lot of pressure on Miko's side, considering now that the postman has been picked. And we have seen uh, Zhao Khan kite incredibly well on this postman. And if he's not kiting, you could you could you could uh rest assured that he is giving away letters and trying to support as much as possible when it comes to giving buffs when it comes to kiting or rescuing so it's still gonna be a tough night out for miko as he bans the psychologist so looking at this lineup here yeah banning out the uh, i would say pretty hmm, single hit hunters I, I maybe he has a hermit i don't know <laughs> We could be seeing anything. If we saw a Hermit last match, then who knows? We could see a Hermit from Nico as well. But we are going to see the lock-in on a certified harasser, the prospector, who we've seen definitely Dude. hit <laughs> so well. So maybe it was a little bit of an oversight, but we are going to be seeing that Hermit get locked in. Jeez. So. Shoutouts to Nell. He's actually on stream right now. He feels like the Hermit should straight up be meta. And by tonight we'll find out because if miko is able to five uh four man kill uh gh or yeah get five points then he definitely is because this is definitely a different lineup we, there are no healers but you got harassers on board so miko could have a tough time here um coming into this match yeah definitely you don't want to overcommit to the harassment because then that waste time with uh not decoding and decoding speed is slow with the connections that hermit has however having that in your back pocket can really help if someone's trying to um extend their kind of. but we will be going into the spawn selections right now seeing again uh, maybe asteroids being played with this spawn selection <laughs> i was thinking of a t-wall like this is uh this is definitely tetris right now i can't unsee it sato uh, and every time I see a spawn selection, I'm like, this is Tetris we're playing. But we do see Miko spawning towards the left, um, well, middle left side of the map. 
Uh, the Postman is on the upper part, upper middle part. So let's see. And Skyfall actually debuting his Acrobat. So this is really interesting because usually Skyfall wants to go for these rescuers. Little boy is still on that prospect. There's Zhao Kahn on his, uh, well, his Zhao Kahn of old with that forward. So I'm excited to see who Miko will lock in with part. Yeah, but we are going to be heading right into the match now, putting down the, the connection immediately and going to be in the area of Chao Kahn here. Probably not the most ideal target if you're playing Hermit, as he can just harass and get that rugby ball distance. So we're just going to have mm -hmm. to wait and see if he can get an early hit onto forward, but it will be no easy task in such a good yeah. hiding area. And Zhao Kahn is known. I mean, he's able to kite like 60 seconds with an acrobat. What more if you have the... the the pallet drop speed of the forward as well as the football and now we see that the forward did have to eat that blue spark and we see that um the forward is trying to just make the most out of this area he is transitioning towards that pallet so he wants to contain miko here as much as he can he's still holding on to that blue spark but i'm pretty sure he's going to want to share the damage with the postman prospector and acrobat just to provide a little bit more support but we're just gonna have to wait and see yeah, definitely cat uh, capitalize on his resource there, allowing him to buy a lot of time for them to be able to share this damage. Whoa! Going to utilize that rugby ball, but for not, he takes a hit anyway, and now his resources are going to be at a halfway mark, going to be Whoa. running towards that center area, going to be taking the polarity, and the rugby ball is used yet again, but he is stunned! Mm -hmm. But now it was distributed though, so that oh wow, and the prospect are able to stun in the process, breaking that line of sight. So this is an excellent um well backup here on the side of Nehru. And now it seems like Miko is gonna expel the blink here, but he is gonna just lock in with the prospector. But that was actually a blink that was uh wasted by the survivors, because now it seems like the forward just away scot free. Yeah, definitely showing how crucial it was to have these harassers in tow with these certain items. He was forced to change his target onto the Prospector who has only this little chip damage and now it's going to be kind of an uphill battle for Miko to try to gain a little bit more presence in the sense that he needs to get someone on a chair. Wow, just chasing Nero is just terrifying, ladies and gentlemen. You have to ban away his Prospector here because so far, so good. He's lasting for like 30 seconds, hasn't eaten a single hit just yet. And now we see him get you uh that sucked into that blue spark and now we see that miko is going to close out the distance here sharing the damage again postman still not even half health so this is an excellent showing and we do see that we're about to hit the three minute mark two minutes 30 seconds no cypher has popped yet but cypher progress has been moving on slowly though sato yeah, considering that they were at a little bit of a disadvantage just due to how he works with his cypher connection uh low speed they are mm -hmm. working with good progress and Nehru is keeping him at bay here only taking mm -hmm. that little chip damage and great show of their philosophy of just constant teamwork and supporting each other with the distribution so now prospector has even easier time of kiting for so much longer to buy them this opportunity to pop their cyphers and now oh, we're in this situation whoa. Wow, that straight off land. yeah yeah but we see that Nehru is not wasting any time. He's still continuing the kite here. But man, he's just kiting for so long for him to be able to get another magnet in the process. But now he's going to, we are going to see Miko kind of change things up. He just went for the slam, but it didn't, uh, it didn't quite work out well. We do see that the prospector gets sucked in. It's a regular hit. Now he's at full presence, but sat out one cypher remains. So it seems like they've also uh, prepared for the hermit of Miko. Definitely, and when you're Miko, you kind of know from last match you shouldn't underestimate, but the play, play it, but he will get hit through the window, so definitely a little bit of a trade-off here, but you know, Nehru lasted so long that it allowed them the ability to almost completely do a 5 cipher kite, like that's crazy to me. Mm -hmm. Considering that the forward was the first one chased, now the forward can actually go for this rescue. He's already healed up, but still connecting those ciphers. So he knows that he's guarding the cipher that's already here. He needs to stuff this rescue. If he's able to get a terror shock, even better. But now it seems like uh, they're kind of on this standstill situation. He's going to try to stun Zhao Kahn. Eats the regular hit, but the prospector is saved. Tide Turner will be in effect for the survivors at this point. Oh, yeah, we do see the decisive pop, and now when you're Miko, you're kind of scrambling because you need to get someone on the chair immediately. And if you're chasing out Nehru, who has been known to kite you for so long, you might be feeling under pressure at this moment. 
Yeah, the pressure is definitely there, uh, Sato, and it's actually immense at this point. Blink being utilized again. He's going to go for the regular down, but they are distributing the damage, so that means Nero can actually go for the dungeon. Yeah, definitely, but that Exegate is stalled off by uh, the Hermit's abilities here. Going to be throwing down that, that electricity. You're going to have a, such a hard time over here when you're the other three survivors at the Exegate with the exit feet so, being so slow. And he takes the hit, the Magnet just recharges him, and now he's in the situation where he's going to go down. Oh, wow. Excellent showing by Nehru. And it seems like they are going to open that site, uh, the exit gate already. One survivor down. So it seems like GH will be moving on, ladies and gentlemen. What a showing from both these, uh, these teams. But GH was definitely ready. Not just with the Hermit being used by Seichu, but for them to be able to counter Hermit, which was an excellent showing on their side. I mean... They were just, uh, they were on top of everything. I mean, Zhao Kahn having an excellent early kite and the follow-up kite by uh, Nehru. Yeah, definitely, Posh. You can just see the excellent show of skillsmanship on both sides. But at the end of the day, GH are going to retain their champion title here. Well, as moving on in their victory in this um, tournament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so congratulations, GH and all the supporters of GH. And for those that are supporting ZT, this is not their last time here in the stage of IVA. They are going to the lower brackets and they will have two lives. But let's uh, let's talk them through this amazing showing of the survivors here. The Prospector Nehru having 199 seconds. That's unheard of, Sato. It's crazy. And to think that this started off with him supporting that forward and able to make him make a run for it and leave safely. It's just an incredible showing of how flexible you can be as a survivor. You can assist your survivor teammates and you can also provide that extra support by kiting yourself. So definitely just amazing showing from Nehru. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we still, I, I would say, yes, the Hermit is still very uh, viable and very in the meta. I would say, though, in like when it came to that chase, I feel like when the dominoes start to fall in the place of the survivors, it's when the the transition happened away from the forward, and there was that blink attempt. But unfortunately, the Nehru was just uh, a step ahead of the 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 hunter, and I think that was the building blocks for him to you know kind of succumb to the pressure that GH has uh, given him. So ultimately GH winning here, ladies and gentlemen. So excellent showing on GH's side. ZT, not the last we'll see of them though. Yeah, definitely don't get your hopes up because ZT is still in this tournament, folks. So definitely keep that in mind as well as, you know, remember that you can be engaging in the chat as well and there are going to be prizes in store if you are active enough. So definitely keep that in mind as there is also another giveaway for skins. Mm -hmm. Yes, by at SunnyKim23 on Instagram. Follow the post on Facebook. Uh, Nello Mello did post it previous to going live here. And also, as Sato mentioned, keep commenting, keep collecting those NM coins and the loyalty rewards because 10 of the most active commenters or chatters will be uh, gifted uh, some amazing IDV merch courtesy of NetEase and also Nello Mello himself because. Uh, they will be um, yeah, giving away awesome prizes. And also, I, I feel like there will be uh, a VIP screen here giveaways uh, for the NM coins. So you can still stand a chance to get a VIP seating for the finals of IVA. So still lots to give away here, Sato. Yeah, definitely. So much prizes that you can capitalize on if you are being active in the chat. So definitely keep chatting, keep messaging, and show your support and love for your fellow teams and also your other fellow chatters. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I feel like we have to take a very short break because we need to get the stage ready for our next match. But don't go anywhere. More of IVA when we return. Stay silent when you hear this sound. The static particles begin to vibrate with the sound waves, indicating they have acquired energy. It may be a tiny amount, yet it's enough to straighten out my thoughts. But the energy can also be huge. As the setting sun shone upon the final rest, I saw a musical note glimmering in gold and dancing in the air, just as they expected. 
the movement spread my life energy and pushed me up a pedestal until I could smell the aroma of talent in the air. The aroma was me, but it slowly faded with time. Once it faded, it cast me into the abyss, where the light from my eyes extinguished. The light shines through my fingers and onto the white keys as I continue writing, hoping the melody points me in a direction. In the reflection, I see what should have happened. He glows golden, just like they first expected. Pushes the world to absurdity. Do you believe? Creating a perpetual motion machine is like being trapped in a never-ending dream. Reality grows from these sketches, expanding through years of fruitless effort. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to day number one of the playoffs here at IVA. Pot Spice and the very powerful Sada Coil on the mic at your service for tonight. We saw an amazing match of the, the Clash of the Champions, if you would, between ZT and GH. But now we're going to move on for FH and TNG. Sada, can I get your thoughts first on initially what we witnessed? Because I would say that we started off pretty hot. So I'm, I'm excited to see. Are we, do, you, do you expect to see more permits? What do, you, what do you expect to see more tonight? 
Um, definitely think that Hermit is a possibility as, you know, you kind of gotta capitalize on survivors trying to find their footing in how to counter Hermit and you can, mm -hmm. again, you can capitalize on that because you're trying to still become familiar with it and when you're in that situation, you can be like, oh, you can make this into a snowball off one little mistake or one little oversight on not mm -hmm. having a picture-perfect teamwork situation. Right. And I think also it shows like the yeah the the levels to Hermit right. We we saw one match where it went really well for him, and it went also another way where it didn't go quite well. So I think the you know at the it's ZT's turn to kind of claw their claw their way back because I do remember in IVC in the playoffs it was ZT to send GH to the lower bracket. So I think it's kind of the reverse sweep of of, of that situation. So a little more on that later. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna move on to FH versus tng some teams uh that we we're gonna learn more about but there's gonna be some familiar faces here and that's the beauty of iva Sada. uh there are some teams here that you know what they're they're making their first mark but we're gonna go with fly high first this is hatari's team hatari being a known forward and being a, one of the one of the known players in in thailand here so i'm excited to see uh his team here because he has uh also joined in the previous ivas so I'm excited to see how he's going to come in, especially with his Hunter Toji here, because there's some new names here that may surprise us. I don't know if you can see Poch, but I'm smiling really hard because I remember the name Toji when looking at the results of the preliminaries, and he did use Hermit more than one time. <laughs> so I think it is very likely we're going to be seeing a Hermit again. But we'll mm -hmm. just have to wait and see. Again, we are going to be seeing some new faces, some familiar faces, and going to really just show the energy of um, IVA and Identity mm -hmm. 5 competitive community and you know, gonna mm -hmm. shake things up a little bit because I'm now seeing the lineup for Touch and Go here. Yeah, so now we got Foru and Fui, Riona. I do see that Wolfie is also here, so that's a very known name here, one of the best rescuers in Southeast Asia. Uh, gracing the stage again, um, going to a different team here, Touch and Go uh, versus Fly High tonight. I mean, one thing I wanted to bring up with Fly High, it reminds me of, I don't know if you watch Q, but the, the Tobe, the, the, the logo, it seemed kind of like that. So for you, all you Q fans out there, I'm not sure if you're going to be uh, rooting for Fly High. But for those with touch and go here, uh, Cat Carry. Oh, Cat Carry? Okay. The Leona Cat Carry is here too. So I'm excited to see how um, how how the synergy is going to be here. And um I did ask Chocho when it comes to uh, insights here, so big shout outs to Chocho. Uh, yeah, you know what? These teams are still trying to build themselves up. Hatari being one of the biggest names in Fly High, and the addition of Wolfie being a TNG. Uh, a lot of questions are going to be answered in terms of synergy wise, because we do know Wolfie is one of the best out there, but you know, you can have an all star team, but you also need that synergy to, to work with, especially if you're going up against the Hermit, like Toji, like you mentioned. Uh, if Toji's gonna bring that out, and for sure he will bring that out. Yeah, for sure. If you are successful with your Hermit, you're gonna want to capitalize on it, especially if you're that familiar with him to secure that victory. But mm -hmm. on the side of Touch and Go's Foru, I did take note of that. That Hunter likes to be closer in Bonbon, bon, so definitely something to keep in mind too, as he is going to be gracing the Hunter stage for us. Mm hmm. And speaking of gracing the stage, that stage will be settled here in Ever Sleeping Town in round number one. So right off the bat, yeah, you will have to respect the... Wow, I was going to say respect the Priestess ban, but no, we're, we're banning out the Seer. So it seems like Foru might be playing to um, uh, single-hit Hunters here, but you're going to allow Hatari on this forward, which he's really known for. Him and Capcom had amazing synergy as the Seer forward tandem that you don't want to deal with. And Hatari, I mean, he gets so much uh, like hype stuns uh, using this forward. And K2 locking in with this Priestess. Pretty solid, I would to say, especially in this map. And this is the first time we're seeing Ever Sleeping Town tonight. Yeah, definitely. Um, gotta say, I feel a little bit nervous about that priestess being let loose. She should have been jailed. <laughs> in my yeah. opinion, uh, uh -huh. the support from her portals are just so strong. But we are going to be seeing the acrobat ban as well. You know, kind of a universal kiter support in a lot of different senses. So definitely an understandable ban, but not super indicative of what the hunter might be having in mind yeah because i mean forward yes there have been some changes to him but he's still pretty good i would have to say as a reliable kiter 
and i mean just the, his toolkit right the, if you use it well the silence the 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 mud bomb as well as the the powder one uh it could it could if you time that well or use it well in certain areas it's still a good pick so now uh good ban on the side of the hunter because he's not actually showing his hand just yet so now we're just gonna have to wait and see who the survivors are gonna pick here again uh hatari is the most known name on this team and it seems like postman will be picked up next which adds to the synergy of the forward and priestess so uh if it if, if they would have it their way the mercenary would come in but i think that's foru's cue to ban the mercenary coming up next oh yeah definitely and having that postman in play definitely just allows him to have those decoding letters to help out the priestess and the forward it's uh, really slow decoding speed, so definitely can pick up the pace a little bit mm. more with him in play. And then with the strong utilization of Postman, if he is mid-kite with his own kite letters, or helping his teammates can be really crucial and vital. But when you're the hunter, you kind of want to get him off of the door first if you're able to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, it seems like Mercenary might be uh, picked up to ban. Uh, patient, psychologist, anyone that has strong kiting and rescuing potential, because uh, it's 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 too scary to leave them out, uh, especially with priestess. I mean, he already have uh, excellent mobility, but if you add, let's say, patient there, if you add a mercenary, if you add, well, psychologist again, we we've, we've debated that like she's just a walking uh, like a character, or she's very uh, basic if 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 she already does not have her stress anymore, so. It's going to be a little tough. So now we see that the patient is going to get banned. So at least it's going to gimp the mobility or the viability of uh, the characters here for a rescuer. Because patient has been relegated to that rescuer role. So now we're just waiting to see the last pick for the survivors. Which, I don't know, for me, I think Mercenary would be the most stable one. But then again, this is like one of the first times this team has graced the stage. So I'm not sure what kind of strategy they might go for. Yeah, definitely don't want to put your cards all out on the table yet. Yeah, when it comes to predictions, I do agree that Mercenary is a really safe rescue. However, that also just pulls down the decoding speed even more. Even despite the fact that Postman can provide those decoding letters to support, it's still not going to change the fact there are three characters with slow decoding speed. Mm -hmm. So if ever, um, yeah, if Mercenary won't be picked, yeah, if you want to opt for like a decoder slash kiter, I mean it's gonna be tough i mean i was gonna say prisoner but you barely see prisoner i know i love my luca here but i don't know if uh, a prisoner would be good uh but yeah i think uh this might be a, a non-negotiable um, here on the mercenary even though yeah it might be uh the decoding time might be slowed down but you still got the the constant threat of not being able to chase him like you really just have to chase that postman but foro on the other hand um if the mercenary does get picked uh, what was uh, the oh there we go mercenary does get picked. Uh, what what was Foru's lineup again? Were you able to mention it was it was sculptor and bonbon? Yeah. Bon? Mm -hmm. yeah, it was sculptor and bonbon bon that I noticed that Foru plays. So sculptor might be a good pick here. Bonbon bon with a priestess loose in, on this map. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe if that's his main hunter, okay. But on paper, yeah, bonbon bon can heavily suffer from how big this map is, especially with. Uh, yeah, with the forward and the, the, the mercenary being able to move well with the, the toolkits that they have, probably want to go for that um, postman to start off with. But if you don't find him, that's going to be tough. So uh, we just have to wait and see who Foro will be locking in with. But if it's any of those two, I'd rather go for the sculptor than the bonbon. Oh yeah, definitely. I feel like Sculptor has, it's more of an all or nothing hunter, but you can more decisively get a 4k with a Sculptor rather than a Bon Bon. Mm -hmm. um, unless you're super confident in your Bon Bon, it's a risk I don't think you want to take, especially in the round one mm -hmm. when you're trying to secure as much points right. as you can. I agree. I, the thing with Bon Bon also is that, um, yeah, the survivors can just choose to sell and go for a time with sculptor it's like it's tough because she can constantly harass you from afar as well because with the with a chisel with the tier two statues with bonbon bon, if you're off to a horrible start you just go for the tie and not even risk anything to go for the rescue and starve that bonbon bon of presence so i feel like with that being said it's yeah I, I, we're just doubling down on what uh the the hunter is gonna pick uh but also in chat if you guys want to chime in please let us know also what you guys think in terms of which hunter if you guys actually have anything any info on foru or any of the survivors here 
do let us know because uh, we're, we're constant students of the game here in IVA since we are shining the spotlight here on the uh, on on the community and the grassroots team because yes we do have our ZTs and GHs but we do want to be able to shine light on the up and coming teams as well because this is you know what the build up for IVC or the qualifiers for Koa it's uh, it's 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 one thing to look forward to if, especially if you're either a tournament you you like entering the tournaments or you want to be able to enjoy amazing identity five action so let us know what you think of of what hunter you think four is going to pick for sure and it's definitely good to keep an eye out on not just the veterans but, but like as you said the grassroots up and coming teams because they are going to be the ones that are constantly moving up and learning and growing and and one day they can become a threat to the current veterans and champions so definitely have them in the back of your mind as well as you know everyone here is rather talented and not, you know definitely just something to keep in mind as they are there's so much talent in all of these teams so mm -hmm. yeah and big shout outs to sarah we also see nell is still in the chat genesis has been chatting since the beginning uh Kristen also says he's a little biased for Hatari, but good luck to both teams. Any shout outs you want to give out, Sato? Uh yeah, I've been seeing a lot of Genesis as well. So shout out to you, Genesis. Uh I did see Sarah. Hello, Sarah. I hope you're doing uh, well. And hi. Really? Mm -hmm. But we are going to be um seeing the Apollon. Yeah, Apollon as we <laughs> load in. <laughs> So yeah. that's the thing, guys. I think, yeah, because we did say like Flywheel is able to counter. Um, I'm looking at the thing because so they lock in their personas before the forward, uh, before the, the hunter gets picked. And it seems like I'm looking at the personas. They got three Flywheels here. So I, they, I think they might have done their homework here. Aside from the Sculptor, aside from the the Bonbon, uh, I guess Foru also has a Pollen to boast here because... When you talk about all or nothing hunters, this is one of the epitomes of all or nothing here with the breaking wheel because it's either 4k or no k. So it seems like he will roll the dice here in Ever Sleeping Town since this is a great map. I mean, it's it's kind of an homage to the IVC of uh, this year, right? That was the story bringing Pollen out in the mix here. But with Flywheel, it could heavily change things. So it's still going to be a tough night for uh, anyone to go after a very skilled Pollen since Flywheel, you have to time it very well. While Pollen, he could just keep looping you around with the extended spikes. So let's see how they're going to choose to tune the offensive beast that is Pollen. Yeah, definitely. We are going to be going into our spawn selections here, and Foru just immediately going to pick like the vicinity of both the mercenary and the Ford. Rather interesting <laughs> that he chose this I would, spawn location. I would say it doesn't matter at this point. Like for Pollen, yeah. like the spawn, he's just gonna go straight into wheel form and just like start rolling around. I think he just, yeah, I guess he wants to get a good ramp up to get to whoever he wants because uh, this is his, um, this is his town, ladies and gentlemen. This was the stomping ground of uh of uh breaking wheel here because this is i mean he was meta for so long before i, I don't know how long that was but the first time he came out he was just so insanely powerful and you know adjustments here and there and now at least uh there is that flywheel to kind of counter the spikes so we're just gonna have to wait and see as we head into the match ladies and gentlemen once again make some noise for fh versus tng sound off in the chat who you're for is it fh is it tng let's find out yeah, definitely. We're going to be heading right into the match here. Furu is going to be scouting out the graveyard area as, you know, really prime target is going to be in the vicinity. Postman knowing this is going to be transitioning away from the graveyard area. So going to have to buy a lot of time here when you are playing Postman and mm -hmm. you don't have as much uh, staying power as the rest of the survivor team is going to be back in wheel form to try to get the spike onto wow. him. He's going to be circling that hole really well executed. Uh huh. Uh oh. And now able to get the first spike. So that's excellent. K two now trans uh, jumping down the the stair area. He's gonna try to see where he's gonna come from. Nice. Uh, discipline by K two. Not committing to one side just yet. The forward in this area. Hatari is gonna try to provide as much support as possible. He does have two spikes on this postman, so it's kind of dangerous for Hatari to still be in this area. He doesn't want to eat any more spikes, but we do see that the postman can he get to the oh he's able to get wow. through the, the portal. Yeah, utilizing that portal very well to gain a little bit more distance and avoid oh! the hit. We do see that the support from the forward is coming into play here. Gonna take Ugh. damage due to it. 
but a very nice show of teamwork in trying to assist that postman in continuing his kite. However, we're going to see Breaking Wheel go back into wheel form to find a better target. So unfortunately, Hatari did time that flywheel a little too late. You did see he ate that hit, then went for the flywheel. So that's a little unfortunate that Hatari did eat that hit. Saved a little bit of football here, but it still helps out that Four who still has not committed to a survivor just yet, since the postman is out of sight, out of mind here. But this is the this is the one of the strengths of this breaking wheel. He can monitor this map so easily. So let's hope that the postman is able to take out those spikes. Basement is at the corner house. Priestess is here. So Hatari now already healed up five ciphers. We are still sitting at Sadaquil. Yeah, definitely going to see him roll around the map in his wheel form. Going to try to find another target here. Not quite seeing anyone, but knowing that Tinnitus is proc, Hatari is in the area. Going to go over that pallet rather quickly, but needing to commit to a target really quick. And going to try to get a spike on him as best as he can. Going to land one spike and going to get out of wheel form knowing that forward is the heart of chase, but you need to get him down as quick as possible throwing down the trap and missing mm -hmm. it. And Hatari doing such a good job at maintaining the distance from Aforu here. Oh, and another portal set up here just to provide a little bit more distance. Foru now just cleaning up shop here. Can go into that wheel form, but he's still chasing down this forward. So Hatari proving to everyone why he's one of the veterans in this game. And we do see that Foru is still trying to close out that distance, but we still have a half football to use. Four Cypher still remaining. Priest is able to set something up at the forward. Falls for the trap. And now that was actually a great down on Foru's side. Four Cypher still remaining. So it's still looking uh, pretty even, I would have to say, in terms of where the, the game is at right now. But accelerated coding can be right around the corner. Yeah, definitely. And Postman is still on the field here, so can provide to that Cypher rush. And we are going to be seeing a Breaking Wheel go back into wheel form. Going to try to be scouting out and monitoring this chair. Um, we do see Rainy Kate is in the area. Going to take a spike here and try to go for this rescue. Going to take the hit and go for this rescue. And Ty Turner is now into effect. And Hatari needs to do a really amazing rebound kite in this situation. Going to utilize that Priestess portal. Excitement is prompt wow. to avoid that stun. Oh, we see that X-ray here, just trying to buy some time here, eating that hit. Beautiful, uh, just forcing attack recovery to happen. And now the forward, though, has to be very careful. Priestess in the area wants to pop that last Cypher. Atari still has some resources to just try and escape the area of effect, but no, able to get the burst damage here. And now the the trap downing the forward once again. Second time, as long, he's going to be on that rocket chair, but three Cyphers still remaining, so... They could still go for a rebound rescue, but it has to be that postman since he's the healthiest. Even though, yeah, there's no tie turner left on anyone since the mercenary does have that wanted order. And he's, yeah, one hit and he's down. Yeah, definitely. K2 going to be providing tinnitus here as he is in the area. Thankfully, he is the one that has the most, most health. Going to go in for that rescue immediately. Not having tie turner. Going to have that flywheel for a postman. Ooh! Hit, but take the hit for the forward. Really show showing a great show of teamwork here and trying to allow Hitari his last legs and a more standing life here. Yeah, so it seems like a little over support, but it's almost towards the end game that they need to keep Hatari alive. Hatari still has some football to use. He has one spike on him. He has to be very careful. Postman being ready with that dog bite. About to be three, uh, two spikes on him. One regular hit. He's fallen down. Oh, the dog bite just to keep him away from the snap. Nice avoidance of that trap. Let's see if Hatari's going to expel the football. And he activates it just in time just to turn the corner. One Cypher remains sat out. So this is going to be an intense pop. Uh, how they're going to be able to do this. Able to flywheel away from the snap! Yeah, K2 in the area to try to provide some support and making sure Hitari stays alive as they continue to work on that last cipher. Uh, it's all or nothing in this situation as it is really close to being popped in this right now. And he's going to just completely commit his sights onto Hitari, but it's going to not matter. The cipher is going to be primed wow. in a second and it is primed! Detention is in the air, still no survivor, down and out. We do see that the Atari does have the option to use the tram if ever he could. But now we see that K2 out in the open here might be chased out, but it seems like he's going to go back and forth. One of the strengths again is mobility on this braking wheel. It seems like he might be focusing on this mercenary. So this is going to be tough because the mercenary still has three elbow pads. Now it seems like he is transitioning, just constantly going back and forth to see who is touching the exit gate, and it seems like K2 will be spotted out. Yeah, definitely. Postman a much more ideal um, target in this situation, especially with the tension on line, and the, he has no resources to really kite around. 
area, so gonna be throwing down that pallet, gonna get trapped, and he is going to take that hit and go onto the chair now. Yeah, so it seems like K2 is gonna have to... Well, he's gonna be the sacrificial lamp. All the survivors already have opened up the exit gate. They want to be able to exit accordingly. So great start for FH Fly High, ladies and gentlemen. Just like that postman is going to be sent back to the manor. So beautiful showing. You got to give it up to um, the hunter. I mean, Boru did do considerably well. But with uh, how Breaking Wheel has been studied and figured out, not to mention some flywheels here and there, it was a tough call for for uh for uh for for the side of TNG. Yeah, unfortunately, it were, it was a risk that really didn't pay off. However, I don't even think it was necessarily just the utilization of flywheel that made it so that the survivors really got a decisive win. It was just a really good show of support all around with the priestess yes. portals, and then Hatari coming in for the assist, and then Hatari's ability to kite, and then you know the post coming in to assist him for a body block too so definitely good mm. show of support all around yeah it was just the, the teamwork right it was the, the flywheel was just a little icing on the cake but if you consider the the placements the kiting time and they just had a, a good understanding of uh what to do at the right moment to counter the breaking wheel they they knew at what point to body block at, at no point that i feel like it was an overextension of support even though that there were some body blocks here and there, but it was very calculated. So I have high hopes for Fly High here, ladies and gentlemen, but it's still not over for TNG because uh, they will have their survivors coming up in uh, in just a bit. But so far, FH takes the first half of round number one. And with that yeah, being said, me. okay, <laughs> go for it. So with that being said, Stay silent when you hear this sound. The static particles begin to vibrate with the sound waves, indicating they have acquired energy. It may be a tiny amount, but the energy can also be huge. As the setting sun shone upon the final rest, I saw a musical note glimmering in gold dancing in the air, just as they expected. The movement spread my life energy and pushed me up a pedestal until I could smell the aroma of talent in the air. The aroma was me, but it slowly faded with time. Once it faded, it cast me into the abyss where the light from my eyes extinguished. The light shines through my fingers and onto the white keys as I continue writing, hoping the melody points me in a direction. In the reflection, I see what should have happened. He glows golden, just like they first expected. Pushes the world to absurdity. Do you believe?
And welcome back everyone, right back into the action here. If you missed it, we just witnessed um, FH just secure a 3 escape against TNG's Foru, mm -hmm. cho choosing that breaking wheel, which was a calculated risk that didn't quite pay off. So definitely gonna have to wait and see what um, FH's Toji is going to have in store for us as he is going to be on the hunter side this time. Dang, I'm a little scared actually. Like you mentioned, Toji coming in and him using a hermit on this map. Uh, it could be kind of tough, but I mean, TNG, you know, Wolfie on that team and, and some other names that we can get to know more of as the, the match continues. I'm excited to see how these styles will clash. And also, a lot of love in the chat for Hatari. Uh, there was like a, a main talking point because Hatari being a well known name. Uh, also, if we give away MVPs, he was definitely one of the MVPs there. They commended his flywheel, even though his first flywheel didn't work out quite well. I mean, the, the kiting, the the way he was able to conserve his football towards the end there, so really good. So I'm excited to um, I'm excited to witness how well the the rest of this is going to pan out for us. Definitely, once again, Hatari being a talking boy, it's a good uh, show that you know capitalize on snowball mistakes and continue on from there forward but as a survivor you can rebound from your mistake and then do an amazing job at supporting your teammates so definitely good show from Hatari there but we will be heading to our picks and bands as TNG survivors are going to be gracing the floor now mm -hmm. so I wonder if uh, they're gonna respect ban that priest no they're not <laughs> I just looked at it now it's gonna be the seer so we I mean sad how we talked about it. it's so scary if the priestess is allowed and I'm pretty sure they're not gonna waste any time and lock in this priestess uh, but they are gonna lock in the barmaid at first because we've seen how well the priestess performed even with a breaking wheel he did bring that excitement which again was uh, optimal choice because you know what he was able to uh, negate the the stun of the portal and the stun of that forward but uh, we'll just have to see. Wolfie on this uh, barmaid uh, could be prop. You know, what? picking the barmaid to start off with is a little unconventional. But maybe, just maybe, they heard you and uh, you said that he does bring a hermit. So he's like, we gotta, we gotta be ready for this hermit. We gotta heal up. So Wolfie on this barmaid. Yeah, definitely. I mean, barmaid with the combination of the teamwork having coming into play in terms of distribution of healing and taking the polarity can be useful and then she can heal herself or her teammates too but we are going to be seeing a ban on the forward and the mercenary coming into play becoming you know the safe stable rescuer that the team like this kind of needs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so now this is going to be a little tough here uh because uh now it seems like they are they do have their support two supports which is the four uh, the priestess and the barmaid but now they need some they need a stunner they need like a prospector they need um they, the batter or something they need they need something to just strike a little bit of fear in toji uh just for him to be able to think a little twice about uh downing any of these survivors um in a map like this though i mean if you know what tonight we haven't seen that much entomologist i don't know if people are just not fans of hers but i'm like i, I really enjoy seeing entomologist i know she's not a stunner but she's definitely excellent support and she can kite for days uh but coming into this one mm, if we're gonna assume it's gonna be a a hermit i think wow they're gonna ban out the uh, antiquarian so i really wanted to see her but uh maybe uh they're gonna try and uh, lock in like a prospector or another stunner just to just to be safe but what are your thoughts sato yeah definitely um have what you said before in mind um with your opinion on kind of needing a harasser in this sense because then it makes things so much harder when you're the hunter and can't apply as much pressure if there is a survivor kind of breathing down your neck as you're trying to chase out someone else so definitely mm -hmm. something you kind of want to keep in your back pocket and keep in mind for team lineups like this but we're just gonna have to wait and see if they're gonna commit to a harasser or maybe um a pseudo rescue or you know someone who can provide utility mm -hmm. in terms of being a kiter but can also kind of double down on different responsibilities if need be mm -hmm, mm -hmm. patient being both an excellent kiter and a rescuer 
Acrobat being same, I would say, as Patient. You know, he can go for the rescues. Can Oh, there we go. Acrobat. Uh, yeah, just coming in also as, uh, yeah, dual responsibilities. Can also go for stuns if possible. So, pretty well-rounded lineup. Uh, I would say, though, the... Not as scary as... The, I don't know. Maybe because the forward is in the first lineup. So, this not looking too scary in terms of harassment. More on sustainability and longevity because the barmaid... Uh, with their speed drink along with the priestess portal like you can see you can find a lot of fun compositions here a, f a lot of fun tandems that you can work with here and that just and that's because of that priestess being loose here so you really have to respect ban that priestess but i mean banning out the seer i'm just uh, still trying to grasp my head uh think about what he could bring to the table like you said he does have that hermit uh but Looking at the lineup as well, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised also if he brought out, let's say, hmm, single hit hunter. Uh, not Dream Witch. I don't think Dream Witch would be good here uh, with this lineup. Maybe Hermit. So, trying to think of anything else. But any any other hunter come to mind for you? Uh, I'm not really sure. But I, again, I don't really have high hopes on him picking Hermit in this situation, just because if you're gonna priority ban Seer then you can simply stun him out of his owl and then that's mm -hmm. like there's no <laughs> well okay uh, maybe i'm proven wrong as we are nay you were you were proven hit. right you were proven right at the start Sato. so we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna edit it out can we can we cut the stream and edit <laughs> i'm kidding no but yeah camera, we, we yeah cut that cut that and put we'll fix it in post but like you said you did the homework it is toji using the hermit i think that's that's one of the things i, I feel like um maybe Taking away the single hit at the start, because he technically is a single hit hunter. He just stuns, uh, but the, it doesn't carry on to damage. So maybe he wants to just at least get uh, the presence built up or at least just dis distribute the damage as much. So, uh, yeah, I think if is, he can start round one off with his comfort hunter, which is going to be the meta of the hermit, might as well do so. And looking at this lineup, decoding isn't going to be as fast as we wanted it to be. But with Wolfie being there and giving that sustain of that drink, they're going to need to be able to distribute the polarities and they're going to need to kite for as long as they can because we're going to use the GH match as that blueprint. You're, the first kite needs to last as long as, as possible because the Cypher Rush isn't going to be available for like, I don't know, for a while. Yeah, definitely. It, it even comes to the point where you're playing Hermit and even if you get like three Cypher Kite, it doesn't really matter because of that slowdown. So mm -hmm. definitely something to keep in mind, not underestimate his strength by any means. But yeah, um, rather interesting. They do need to sustain their kiting abilities against Hermit because again, that is going to so low. Well. Our spawn selections kind of predictable that we do see the mercenary and the priestess kind of center so they can provide that support or be in the area for a rescue around the map and has that high mobility if need be and then the barmaid and the acrobat can simply run to the priestess and have her assist with portal escapes mm -hmm. so i mean the distributions are still gonna kind of matter but toji once he starts the match he's just gonna connect the ciphers right with um, and just try to control as much as possible. So he has his option to chase after the barmaid or that priestess to start things off. And considering that the barmaid can go for that drink, but I mean, there's still that stun that you have. Um, so he's going to have to time that really well. So it's, uh, we have, I I'm keeping track on the hermit matches, right? So, so far it's 1-1. One, one. Like hermit was able to get 5k, but it was also get 1k. So he is looking like he's meta, but... We still have to, I mean, as as the days go on, as we see him, we're going to figure where to put him out. But so far, initial impressions is that he's very impressive. Definitely, we're going to see him push his connection to the ciphers right away, kind of debating on where. And instead of going to the corner house, he is going to be heading towards center where Cat Carry and Hollow are kind of in the vicinity. And you don't really want to chase Priestess, but seeming like she's going to leave the vicinity of the heartbeat as the... Hermit changes his target, but no, he's going to really commit to whoever is proccing the Sinaitis here. And it seems like it's Cat Carry, so... Now, this is going to be a little tough, because the Priestess, she could just, yeah, use the portals just to move back and forth here. And uh, this can provide so much time for the survivors to just prop themselves up and, like, just decode as long as they can. Because this is still a, uh, a starving Hermit here. 
Misses the, the blue spark here. He's going to just try to keep looping this, and this could be a nightmare for any hunter. Definitely, and Priestess is constantly losing this line of sight, utilizing her portal to gain so much distance and continuously transitioning away from him. So, kind of a slow start for Toji, but you know the Cypher progress is going to be slow, so he has that as a saving grace to rely on. But you know, Cat Carry's going to use that final portal right now to try to go into the graveyard area to not disrupt the progress of the other Cyphers being worked on. And this is what's scary, because Cat Carry, uh-oh, now it forces the Blink to come out, Nice avoiding. Oh, gets the blue spark, though, and he's going to share that damage with that barmaid. So that's still, I would say it's pretty good because the barmaid can heal up. But now Cat Carry able to get the pallet stun. So beautiful start still on the survivor side. He's going to try and go for the, the red spark, but still uh, just buying enough time for the team. If she gets downed here, this is actually great. Uh, if she's able to gain another portal, she can transition away from the graveyard area back to the center. But it seems like Toji is going to try to swing and swing early. Unfortunately, they're unable to get the red spark. The flywheel able to... Oh, well, it actually got hit. So, <laughs> again, I gotta get used to that. No worries. It did get depleted, but she only took a little bit of damage because of the health distribution. So that is um, definitely something you have to commend. And the stud of the survivors, having that teamwork mm -hmm. in mind, gonna be dropping down this stun oh. just to secure this hit. And now she is a little bit above half health injury. So now Cat Carry is gonna go away from the graveyard and try to once again lose line of sight and gain a lot of distance to waste as much time as possible here. Having that portal in play, gaining mm -hmm. even more distance as she loses line of sights and continues to loop this graveyard area he's still not a full presence he can't go for that orb uh orb shock there now he's gonna try to just change up the connections here so cat carry doing an amazing job so far and uh three cyphers remaining and it's only two minutes in so this is actually the best cypher rush you can ask for uh, up against the hermit so cat carry really carrying the team here in terms of just providing an excellent kite here in the graveyard, not disrupting any of the cipher progress. Able to, you know, be safe there, but now drops down here and Cat Terry just moves and sidesteps away. So this is actually still an amazing kiting session. Two ciphers remaining, Sado. Had yeah, definitely a really great show of how proficient that this priestess is in continuing this loop and not allowing Hermit to even have one chair yet so far and she doesn't even have portal she will have a portal again in a moment but definitely constantly depleting her portals and just providing such a great kite here she's gonna use her portal again to not have the slow <laughs> oh! one's gonna mind game him and go right back to the graveyard such an amazing oversight um hermit though gonna have to be forced to go through the window and try to chase her down but there's already a cypher that's almost done and then the pressure is all on the hermit in this case and look at that taking the tram and now we see that the mercenary is here but the mercenary could just easily tank a hit here oh my god this is actually a great showing on this priestess man cat carry mvp potential mvp but now it seems like wolfie will be the one to kind of take this next kite but no toji not wasting any time gonna try to go for another survivor which in the in the vicinity it's gonna be hollow hollow being the uh, acrobat can still be a tough chase and, and mind you sado we have not seen a survivor yet on a rocket chair yeah, definitely and it's only a matter of time and then the cypher is popped and now toji needs to scramble to get at least one cypher Whoa. on a chair at this moment detention is online gonna land oh. that hit onto mercenary but there is the shared distribution of health once again so mm -hmm. he can't afford to get hit another time Jeez, and now Toji has to scratch. He needs to get at least one to tie things up, but the mercenary here, I mean, yeah, he still has two elbow pads, so Wolfie doing an amazing job. Uh, the, the the dungeon is there. You do see him trapping some bombs here, but forcing him to exit through the window. He's going to try to go for the bomb here, but now we see that Wolfie can actually run towards the exit area. Is she going to go for it, or is she going to take a hard left? It seems like she's going to try to make a U-turn here. And we're going to see a portal being used. Can she go through it in time? She's able to get through it. And I believe this might be a four-person escape. Just like that, Sado. T and G get five points. Just an amazing show. Just kiting ability. Whether it was with portals or not, she was able to maintain this permit on her this in basically the entire game so mm -hmm. look at her containing speed it's 183 that is certainly really impressive given that hermit has stunned in his set so mm -hmm. 
just an amazing showing from Kat Carey. She really just lived up to their name. Yeah, can I just say though, like, yeah, um, it's just the I think it was Kat Carey's uh, knowledge of this hermit to be able to uh, just contain him with no support from anyone else. It was just the priestess in this vicinity. So that's another case study, Sado. You got to ban priestess on this map because even uh, a new hunter like Hermit still struggles in trying to down this priestess that has the stuns. He wasn't fully fed though, but still, he had the skills. He had the time also because he was able to control the ciphers. Like, that was a really long kite. 183 seconds is no joke. And no survivor sat on a rocket chair. So that was just an excellent showing on the survivor side. Yeah, definitely. And that global portal really did help secure that for escape. So with that being said, we will be cutting to a short break here. Stay tuned for more action. Stay silent when you hear this sound. The static particles begin to vibrate with the sound waves, indicating they have acquired energy. It may be a tiny amount, yet it's enough to straighten out my thoughts. But the energy can also be huge. As the setting sun shone upon the final rest, I saw a musical note glimmering in gold and dancing in the air, just as they expected. The movement spread my life energy and pushed me up a pedestal until I could smell the aroma of talent in the air. The aroma was me, but it slowly faded with time. Once it faded, it cast me into the abyss, where the light from my eyes extinguished. The light shines through my fingers and onto the white keys as I continue writing, hoping the melody points me in a direction. In the reflection, I see what should have happened. He glows golden, just like they first expected. Pushes the world to absurdity. Do you believe? action here we have returned from our break and i sado cool am here along with my co-caster patch spice so definitely just a good show of uh you know really exciting matches last round here we do see that tng has the better score so they have won round one and i'm in the middle of this intense action i grabbed some some food just because it's like it's so intense but tng ladies and gentlemen Cat Carey, that's a name I'm going to remember for sure on that priestess. We were talking about it offline, how not just the understanding of how to counter Hermit, but just how to just kite in general, right? Because I think uh, when it comes to Hermit, yes, he's very powerful, but it has to be in the right hand. So I feel like 
um, some of these hunters also are kind of experimenting on this big stage. So uh, we can't be too harsh with um, how it's like, oh, he's, he's using a better hunter, but, you know, it's not to the, the full effect. Like, we're still, I mean, hunters are also figuring out how to use uh, Hermit. And Toji being one of them, he brought out in the prelims. He's bringing it out now. He's trying his luck. Unfortunately, it didn't pay off so well. But, you know what, that's, that's how this is played. And that's why IVA is here. It's, it's a stage for people to perform in. And we got to reward them for that. And we got to give uh, credit where credit's due. And also kind of, um, yeah, just, um, I would say, commend them from their, for their bravery and also for them to put themselves out there. But it seems like, uh, Sadao, it's it's the battle of the survivors of for Fly High and Touch and Go. And uh, Touch and Go with a three-point lead and a round lead. So let's see if uh, this one's going to end in round number two or round number three. Because the next map we're going to be seeing is the Red Church. Yeah, definitely Red Church being a little bit of a hassle if you're the hunter, if you allow that survivor to constantly loop you on that church area, it's a little bit of a annoyance, but I mean, depending on your hunter, that can be not so much of a factor. So we're just gonna have to wait and see who we are going to on the hunter table and our survivor picks and bands as well. So mm -hmm. definitely excited and gonna see how this strategic choice of Red Church is going to affect the pace of the match yeah it seems like um tng will actually be uh, uh the ones that will be surviving first so i can't wait to see what cat carry is going to be doing so now i think this uh we could say it all together you gotta pen that priestess especially in this map in in the in the church area she could be so annoying uh when she set up those portals and then you lose line of sight it's uh it's gonna be tough so now this is toji's rematch or redemption because we did say that yes he did use the hermit in the previous matches but now let's see what else he can bring to the table because hermit is relatively new so i can't wait to see what other hunters he's actually had let's say a little more experience using yeah definitely gotta commend him for bringing out that hermit regardless you know not every experience is going to be carved the same way he was successful with the hermit in the preliminaries not so successful this time but you know gotta commend him for trying gotta you know commend that um confidence he came in trying to secure a win with that hermit choice didn't work out but you know everything is a learning experience so we're gonna just have to wait and see and you know, just witness what other hunters he might have in his back pocket. So definitely mm. going to keep an eye out for Toji here. Yeah, so considering the this map, yeah, there's a, actually most, if not all, hunters are pretty good on this map. You can make a case for Sculptor, you can make a case for Bon Bon. Uh, Red Church is one of my favorite maps as well, aside from Arms Factory, since it's like, uh, that's where I learned how to 1v1 people. So it's uh, it's a good map, I would have to say, especially if, you, if you're a survivor and you spawn away from the broken walls area because the broken walls area is not the best friend of the survivors so we're gonna head into the picks and bands ladies and gentlemen red church is where we're gonna settle round number two will it head to round number three we'll just have to find out and see but toji not wasting any time banning out the seer to start things off yeah definitely once again such a universal ban and but gotta wonder okay wow we are gonna be seeing the respect ban on you the have to definitely. you have to. <laughs> yeah you definitely have to ban that priestess, not only because of her uh, utilization of the portals, but just because we know Cat Carey did such an amazing job on the priestess alone. Definitely mm -hmm. good to take that out of their back pocket and force them onto a different character. So interesting that they went to ban the Dream Witch. So Toji could actually prop to bring out the Hermit again if he wants to. Um, maybe he needed to warm up, who knows, but it's it's uh it's gonna be a little risky because if you, if it's still the same results that could do a number onto your confidence so we're gonna see a barmaid and a psychologist picked up uh for the side of the survivors uh they didn't i didn't even see the barmaid get utilized as much i know she mixed the drink but it was really the priestess that and a little bit of the mercenary that we saw in the previous match for tng so Forward is going to get banned, which is actually pretty solid, but this kind of opens up the mercenary to get picked up by Wolfie, which she had an amazing dungeon escape with. So we're just going to have to see if uh, she will lock... Oh, they will go for the mercenary. Okay. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, mercenary just being this all well-rounded rescuer, safe rescuer can tank these hits. We have psychologist coming in with her stress relief, kind of acting as another part of this team lineup being kind of tanky in that sense that they can recover or they just take a long time to down. And even depending on the rock hiding ability of the barmaid can sustain herself for a long time, even if she's able to get that wine off mid chase. So definitely mm -hmm. something to be a little bit scared of, but we are going to see a ban on the acrobat. No, sir, we are not going to see. The <laughs> Where did he come from? I oh my gosh, that's why he's banned. Sad yeah. you're keeping him from everyone. Keeping I'm sorry, Jill's him, but wow, we're gonna be seeing an antiquarian <laughs> come into play for the first time. So not only do we see a hermit debut in IBA, but Jesus. also the antiquarian. So definitely really excited to see that. But Dude, surprise, there's... surprise, two debut characters are coming back and gonna fight it out here. There's no chill. <laughs> we were just we we're kinda geeking out for the antiquarian and all of a sudden Tochi double downs and like, no, we gotta run back. We're gonna run this back, we're gonna do it right. Give him your powers, ladies and gentlemen. Toji on this hermit once again. He's going to roll the dice on this character. A uh, very strong character, but it was a uh, cat carry to kind of uh, be able to provide the long, one of the longest kites we've seen so far in IVA. So it could have been just that. It could have been just the priestess. It could have been the jitters of the tournament. Now there's going to be no stone unturned for Toji. He's all warmed up. He wants to be able to prove that he's uh, his hermit is up to par with you know what the best of the best. So let's see if um, Touch and Go really knows how to counter this hermit. Yeah, definitely. And you bring a good point on the priestess's prior kiting ability. And you, when you have cat carry on a character like Barmaid who has the potential to kite out this hermit. Um, mm -hmm. Really scary thing with her, uh, Dolphin can do the speed wind, but I digress, we are going to be going into the spawn selections right now. So the first carry being the center, gonna be really helpful in the sense that you can get around the map anywhere with high mobility by being in that central area. Yeah, I think that's the best possible like scenario for the mercenary, just be at the center, be ready for any rescue attempts that can happen. Um, because yeah, he's definitely not gonna get the first chase, but we are gonna see Toji um, spawn over at the near the shack area across. The, oh wait, maybe not. Going for the red carpet. So interesting. I thought he was gonna actually go for the barmaid, but it seems like he might. Yeah, kind of go for that psychologist. You do have to invest a little bit more time, but once you chair the psychologist, she's pretty much just a, uh, a regular character with no items to have uh, to use to just rebound kite. So I guess that might be a strategy coming into this. Yeah, definitely. She only carries her whistle and that can't really, obviously that can't really help you mid-kite. Your stress can, <laughs> but like in, in in like contrast of trying to chase a barmaid, she has her wine to use, which is regardless of if, if it's healing or if it's trying to gain distance, can be a little bit more of an issue to chase than the psychologist who just has that extra tankiness to her. So we're just going to have to wait and see if the psychologist's raw ability to kite is going to pay off here as we hit right into the match. And we see the ciphers are going to be connected. Yeah, and not wasting any time. He's already closing out the distance between him and the graveyard area because that is where the psychologist does stay. And he's uh, white already transitioning towards the back exit side. Uh, hopefully no one is there for um, him to run into, but I did see there was someone working on that cipher. It seems like white uh, ducking down, but unfortunately the, the blood trail will be spotted out by Toji. And now uh, white will be, have to be the one to kind of do what Carrie did and provide the kite to happen. Yeah, definitely. We are going to see the psychologist take Ooh. that. Wow. Utilize that perfect pellet stun in that situation. Going to buy a little bit more time to, you know, if she gets hit, it, their teammates can really provide that health distribution. So now she is in an even better situation than she was before landing that pellet stun. It's going to take another um, charge, I suppose you would call it. And, you know, mm -hmm. psychologist is keeping the dream alive constantly, you know, back and forth, not allowing a hit to really go off in the situation. Wow. It does take one hit, and mm -hmm. but not very much as her stress is going to be going down. Yeah, Barmaid was able to share that damage. She still has that stress to be able to eat, but now goes for a, a blink hit. But unfortunate, he didn't want to go for a pellet drop. So now uh, Toji, you know what? At, at least he's able to be a little more productive in the first minute of this game compared to the previous round. So uh, White still has to remain uh, that calm and collected. 
Uh, now he's going to get another spark going on here, but we do see that White transitioning away. He can't eat a regular hit again. He's going to share it with the Mercenary and now Psychologist. Now a walking, well, just a regular character at this point because she is damaged. That whistle is going to pay no effect while chasing, while being chased down. Yeah, definitely. Psychologist allowing uh, her fellow survivors to really just buy this time to continue working on the Cypher progress, which is, granted, a little bit slow, but Antiquarian's almost done with one, and I can only imagine the progress on the other Cyphers are looking really good, so definitely a good start for TNG as Psychologist continues this kite, and Toji struggles a little bit to get this hit onto her once again. We do see the hit lands, and the distribution obviously comes into play, and mm -hmm. just looking really good for TNG so far. Yeah, and Barman taking that hit knows that she can because she is going to heal up with her Dublin and we see that white on her last legs here but so far so good if you're able to two cypher kite a hermit that is a job well done able to drop the pallet in time and now still creating a little bit more space and a little more time he's going to try to go for the through uh, through the window hit but he unfortunately was not able to connect so white doing still an amazing job here just buying enough time for these cyphers to move but unfortunately there he's going to eat another hit and now toji is at full presence definitely psychologist just doing a good job and the teamwork is showing an immense you know, success here, keeping Psychologist alive and allowing the Cypher progress and rush to continue on. So, um, Psychologist can take one more hit before going down, and it's just still a lot of time wasted. Uh -oh. And the Hermit really needs to get her down at this rate, but the discipline shows that White is not going to commit to that Elliot drop over here, but does Ooh. take the hit. So that was a little unfortunate because they still shared that damage and you know she was going to fall down immediately. But Mercenary is already healed up. Mercenary is going to have to go for this rescue since he's the only one with that Tide Turner. But he has a little bit of that chip damage. So let's see how he's going to play this one out. Antiquarian still has some stuns to boost. And we do see that the Mercenary is already making his way for this rescue while the Hermit is going to try to change up the ciphers here. He's going to have to go for a regular hit here. Oh, baiting it out. Beautiful discipline on Wolfie's side. And now White is going to transition towards the red carpet. Right, and White does need to do such a good rebound kite, but the last effort is propped, and Psychologist will be seeing the chair for the second time. Um, I mean, still, the separate progress is enough to really warrant getting another rescue off if possible. But I think despite all of this, um, the success Whoa. that Toji has, but we do oh! see that Aquarian gonna try to come in for the support, does narrowly oh! miss as well. We do see the balloon rescue come off, it is really just good show of display of Antiquarian skills, but Psychologist goes down again, but you know, it's just here to buy a lot more time for that final cipher to prime as it is slow decoding speed. Mercenary is gonna go have to go for this rescue, Antiquarian has already left the building, he's already left the area, doesn't want to deal with it, he's gonna try to go for a charged up hit, is gonna just go for a regular one and now he's gonna try to body block for as much as he can so this means that the cypher progress isn't possibly ready for that last pop and now the stun able to create that separation between the mercenary and the psychologist so it seems like white is gonna just go for the flywheel here and they pop the cypher sato yeah, definitely interesting. Gonna utilize that flywheel for distance, but it's gonna be caught out in the stun. Gonna take the health distribution definitely in your pocket as well. But now Toji's in the situation where he needs to apply pressure, needs to get someone on a chair as soon as possible. There Ooh. is a point deficit to keep in mind, but Wolfie is in the area, but the dungeon is still there too. I'm not sure if I agree with this chase because Wolfie still has three elbow pads. So I'm not sure uh, if, if Toji realizes that because she can still create that distance. So this is buying time for the survivors to open up the, the back exit gate. So I guess uh, they are going to go for the exit. And it seems like Wolfie's the only one here. Wolfie falls down. But he at least uh, gets one survivor out of the game. So it's still a three-person escape for TNG. TNG uh, survivors win this first half. Toji for trying out this hermit again, but uh, didn't pay off. Maybe just try something else at this rate because if you're not finding success, then obviously that might not be the most optimal choice at this time. But definitely mm -hmm. good show of teamwork from TMG and the psychologist did such a great job of kiting containing hermit as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would definitely have to agree with you there. Toji, you know, and you got to commend him for going back to the well with this hermit. But it didn't pay off. It didn't even go for a tie. So unfortunately, in, in tournament standards, 
Uh, that's not going to cut it because the TNG survivors did take the win. This adds a little more pressure on the survivor side because uh, the survivors just need to tie... Uh, well, the hunter just needs to tie this one out and they win this. So uh, kudos to Toji for bringing back the hermit. But I, I think maybe um, the sty stylistically, this might not be the hunter for him. Or he could uh, probably polish it up a little, a little more because... We have to be honest, this is also a new hunter, so I think uh, other, other players out there are still getting familiarized with how to do the first chase and how to be able to, you know, use the stuns accordingly. But, I mean, that was White and that was Cat Carry able to kite out Toji for at least three ciphers. So, TNG really did their homework and they really know how to face up against this Hermit. Yeah, we are going to see a lot of pressure on them as we move forward, but for now we are going to take a short break. Remember everyone to continue interacting in the chat, you have much rewards to possibly gain, so stay tuned everyone. Stay silent when you hear this sound. The static particles begin to vibrate with the sound waves indicating they have acquired energy. It may be a tiny amount, yet it's enough to straighten out my thoughts. But the energy can also be huge. As the setting sun shone upon the final rest, I saw a musical note glimmering in gold and dancing in the air, just as they expected. The movement spread my life energy and pushed me up a pedestal until I could smell the aroma of talent in the air. The aroma was me, but it slowly faded with time. Once it faded, it cast me into the abyss, where the light from my eyes extinguished. The light shines through my fingers and onto the white keys as I continue writing, hoping the melody points me in a direction. In the reflection, I see what should have happened. He glows golden, just like they first expected. Pushes the world to absurdity. Do you believe? And welcome back, folks, to the Identity 5 Arenas. Round number two is on our way. Second half, we're still at the Red Church. Pot Spice and Sado here giving you the action. TNG just showing us that they have studied the Hermit matchup. Still kudos to uh, uh, the Hunter of FH. He was still able to do as much as possible with the Hermit. But again, you know what? We're still figuring them out. And... You know, we did see spades of it, but it kind of shows that uh, the, the survivors were able to counter it. Like, I mean, I'm just going to bring it out there, Sato. For the barmaid to eat most of the hits and just drink up and for her to just, uh, yeah, just keep tanking those hits. I think they had a very well, they, they had a well executed plan and understanding of the Hermit matchup. So kudos to TNG in that uh, first half. 
Yeah, definitely. They continue to show us they well, they work like a well-oiled machine, just constantly like clockwork, knowing when to take the health distributions, and then whoever is kiting at that time just honestly knows how to kite permit. And then having that raw kiting ability, and not even having the resources like an item to fall back on as like you know your safety blanket. Just shows mm -hmm. a lot about the strength of these uh, survivors. So definitely, really excited to see how they play moving forward too. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to see how FH's survivors are going to kind of bounce back from this one because, like you said, the the hunter of TNG has a bonbon, bon, has a sculptor. We did see the breaking wheel come out. Might get banned. I'm not quite sure, but bonbon bon and sculptor on this map of Red Church is actually pretty good. So. It's uh, it's gonna be tough because I mean, seeing those two hunters, it's safe to say like a tie could be imminent, and FH does not want that to happen because TNG is in the lead. They want to push for that round number three, so uh, it's gonna be a tough call for them. Um, but you know what? Looking back though at the survivors, like Hatari did pretty well. He was one of the MVPs there, so uh, I can't wait to see how they are going to try and approach this match, knowing that the pressure is definitely on uh, their side. Yeah, definitely need to just keep it cool, calm, and composed. Obviously, they are in a point deficit right now, but you cannot let that, like, hinder your mindset moving forward because the worst thing to do is work under pressure and make a mistake. So definitely mm -hmm. just want to have high hopes, high energy to keep moving forward and try to regain the points that you lost and secure Correct. this round. And speaking of high energy, you gotta love the energy in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. So shout outs to each and every one of you that is commenting. We do see them. Uh... I think Jong is actually here. Shout out to Invisible Jong. Follow, uh, subscribe to his YouTube channel. He will be commentating this weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, Veronica has also joined us in the chat. Sarah as well. Uh, Nell is also here. And Sato, I'm going to throw it to you. Like, we got some amazing giveaways uh, for, for people if they interact, right? Yeah, definitely. So one of them is that as long as you are like one of the top 10 highest in engagement and activity you can earn a lot of identity 5 merchandise so that's definitely really exciting mm -hmm. you can also sign up for sumi kim mm -hmm. kim's um skin mm -hmm. uh giveaway with there's two s skins being given out as well as an a tier so definitely want to yes. check them out as well mm -hmm. It's at SunnyKim23 on Instagram. You got to follow her. You got to like this. Like the Nello Mello page. Share the stream also and like it as well and keep commenting. Uh, but do check out the full mechanics on the Facebook page. And also, I think there were some questions being asked about the coins. So the NM coins can get you uh, a free shout out. Also a fan sign from the casters. And also get a chance to be a VIP. Uh, well, to get a VIP seat for the grand finals. So um definitely keep commenting keep earning those loyalty rewards get the the nm coins as well because there's a lot to give away ladies and gentlemen just like uh, iva keep leveling up each and every year you know what we also want to give back to the fans and that's how we do it so i'm excited to start things off because we are still gonna head back to the red church and it is going to be uh i i believe um for foru for is it for yeah foru is gonna be hunting Yes. Oh Foru. god, and he's a guard 26 performer. Yeah. The <laughs> yeah, with the potential of having this Bonbon and Sculptor, as you said, both really strong on this map if deciding to take this out. So, as you also pointed out too, have to wonder, are they going to respect Ben that um, breaking wheel? I mean, granted, I don't think he is the strongest on this map either, so maybe that's not in their mindset. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. got to just wait and see was we do see the ban on the forward on the side of four root. This is interesting. Allowing the priestess to come out, that's uh that's a little scary. So um we're just waiting to see Oh priestess, there we go. God. Okay, round number two, you get two bans. So forward priestess off the table, out of sight, out of mind. You don't need to worry about that. And also Hatari on this forward. You're gonna force him to go outside of his comfort zone and pick other characters. Uh, we are going to see him ban the Sculptor, so I think they want to roll the dice on the Bonbon bon here. So this kind of opens up Oru to just... Yeah, I don't know if he's going to reveal his cards right away, but it seems like based on the the background that you searched for, uh, Sado, and based on what I saw, he's a Guard 26 performer. He might want to try and throw them off in a loop because they can try to out... Uh, they can try to win in the picks and bans here and try to just counter ban him. Uh, with with the characters that they pick here. 
Yeah, definitely. I think it was the smartest move to ban that sculptor, but we are going to be seeing mm. a seer finally come out of jail along with the female dancer on Red Church. Rather interesting, if I do say so myself. Mm hmm. Seer, we, yeah, against the guard 26. I don't know if they're, if they're, I think he'd allow it to come through. If he's, if he is going to go for that, um, that, is that guard 26. I don't know if he's going to go for that breaking wheel again because he did ban the seer up and against that wheel match. But something I do have to point out, and people in the chat also noticed, Dancer coming into the mix here in, in terms of competitive Southeast Asia Identity 5. So it's a welcome mix. I'm excited to see how this dancer is going to work out. And now we're going to throw it on over to the next band, which is the Acrobat. Yeah, I um, definitely can appreciate this band knowing that he has high utilization, utility, support, can be a really strong kiter, can help with his bombs, can be a pseudo rescue if need be, but we are going to be seeing a harasser come into play. The prospector can be really integral by utilizing those rechargeable magnets, so definitely mm -hmm. exciting to see him again, and hopefully he's as ex as as successful as the other prospectors we've seen so far. <laughs> Speak shoutouts to Nehru for him being one of the most explosive uh, prospectors. I feel like every time he was able to kite, his magnets were always just ready. And that just shows how long he's able to contain the hunters. So hopefully K2 can replicate that same type of success. But it will be at the expense of Foru. Note that FH is put in a tough spot here because they need to at least get three person escape here to keep this one going. If not, immediately TNG wins. Uh, so it's it's a tough call. They need to they need to avoid a tie and go above and beyond that. So we're just gonna wait and see the last ban on Foru's side. I mean, he could still. I mean, you could ban Mercenary. I mean, Entomologist is really good here, but she doesn't seem to be making any waves uh, when it comes to the picks and bans. So maybe not considering that. Maybe Psychologist, depending if Foru is gonna go for the the Bonbon. Um, who else could counter Bonbon? Maybe some Cipher Rushers also. He could probably ban that. But I mean, it might reveal his hand too uh, too much here, and, and Hatari can go for another. Uh, counter comp for the bonbon right and looking at fh's lineup we don't really see a secure rescuer so that could be you know they're trying to go big or go home going risky with this obviously we do have a uh, one remaining pick to happen but as of right now we don't have any decoding mm -hmm. debuff characters on the team lineup so obviously cypher rush is going to be in tow a little bit of their strategy gonna be pulled in here definitely just wanting to quickly go through these ciphers as quick as possible and also mm. be a little bit more kite dependent yeah uh yeah no main rescuer they still have uh the cypher rush that can be on their side so yeah i think he, he might go for he might ban the 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 mercenary uh but if they ban the mercenary what else is left for the survivors to choose um unless they really just double down on not rescuing and go for survivability which again can be a very interesting strategy because um it's like they're uh they're going all out in terms of just support rescue like no one's gonna get seated on a rocket chair which is a very dangerous strategy because you want to be able to have that mitigation of uh, or you want to have that safety net of a rescuer and speaking of rescuers the mercenary being banned they're gonna have to yeah consider another plan of action here uh and another survivor to bring to the table yeah, definitely. Getting rid of that mercenary really just gets rid of the most secure rescue in the game as it stands right now. I suppose if you want to get another rescue into this lineup, never mind that we are going to be seeing a lock on Weeping Clown. Rather interesting, we hardly see this character mm. be thrown out in tournament, let alone in a situation where it's do or die. So we're going to have to see if this is well worth the risk here. Yeah, when it's a do or die situation, it's... Uh... Dang, you want to kind of go for stable ones, but I think ugh, they want to go for... I, w I mean, you categorize him as, yeah, rescuer support in a way, because he can stun, but I mean, his reception his first launch was a little underwhelming because it was so hard to control. The startup time on his rocket is still pretty slow, despite some of the changes. So, uh, Hatari still living up to his forward name here. He's uh, going to go with the with the joker you're gonna go for this uh, the weeping clown so this kind of leaves oh uh, yeah for open to just yeah p picking the bonbon uh i wouldn't suggest to go for that wheel i think he could just go for the bonbon secure a tie 
and then yeah to call it a night because they're gonna have to go for the rescues they cannot afford uh having one sur- they need to go for the rescues as much as they can to prolong um this game to game number three so i would say this is the most uh this is the best possible time for four to bring out this bonbon yeah, definitely. Ken is known for being a Thai hunter, and that's again, that's all you really need in this situation. And we are going to be seeing Farouz Bonbon grace the stage. And you know, again, this is a do or die situation. Um, the survivors have an uphill battle to really climb up in this situation. Can only hope that these calculated risks work in their favor. I'm still mm-hmm. a little bit hesitant on this weeping cow pick. But... <laughs> I no. share the same hesitations, but we've been proven wrong before, so we're just gonna have to trust, right? But I get you, and um, this is gonna be tough. This is gonna be a really tough lineup, uh, how to counter. So we're gonna, um, I'm gonna find out what the well, we were gonna find out what the the personas were gonna be because uh, are they even gonna bring Tide at this point, or they're just gonna try? Because it's gonna be so scary to rescue over Foru, especially on his Bon Bon. Yeah, definitely. It becomes, again, just an uphill battle when you're facing Bonbon bon who can mind game you with those bomb placements and the timing of it all <laughs> is just so difficult sometimes when you are on the survivor side. But um, it's looking like so far we're going to see two, three flywheels in yeah. the high turner. <laughs> so rather nah. interesting if they're going to stick to this. Um, obviously, they want to go for kite ability and cypher rush. I, so I guess yeah. that makes sense. But... I think, again, you have to lock in the new mechanics, ladies and gentlemen. You have to lock in your personas before the hunter gets picked. So this is definitely a lock. We have three tie- three flywheels, one broken windows, no tide turner. So a no rescue strat here. Or if they will go for the rescue, you're on your own. Because, yeah, tide turner is not going to help out. We're going to see a three-man lineup, a T-shaped lineup here with Atari being across the red carpet area over at the shack. So it's still going to be tough. It's still not an easy feat for Foro, even though, though on paper, this is a match for him to win or at least get a tie because there's so much pressure on FH's side. But, you know, GH was able to come back from worse situations and Foro positioning himself at the upper left side of this map between Hatari and Rainy K. So this is going to be, a, this is gonna be a, a, an exciting one uh, tonight, Sato. Yeah, definitely. Honestly, cannot shake my nerves for FH. Gotta hope the switch switching providers that they chose is just gonna pay off in their rock hiding abilities or being able to utilize their items that they have to continue on their kites and completely negate any possible bombs that may get hit and, you know, just extend out their kite, waste so much time, allow the cypher rush to happen. But, you know, we are just gonna be heading right into the match here with Bon Bon. Um, Mm-hmm. Already transitioning towards the shack area where Hatari is going to be at. Uh, luckily, still keeping some of his music boxes here. Already setting up like a slow box thing. We are seeing Foru trying to just mind game here. Already vaulting through the window, just cutting off Hatari before he's able to get inside the church. And we do see that K2 is also in this area, just providing a little bit of that tinnitus and support. But Hatari is game enough to take this first kite. Yeah, definitely. We see Foru gonna be uh, following the bloodstains and gonna try to figure out who he is chasing, which is obviously Hatari, well-known Uh-oh. kiter, can help support with his team with a really good kite. Wow. Gonna take one chip damage from the bomb. Wow, we're gonna have that slow oh! boss come down, but she still takes the hit anyway with that pirouette. Gonna have to, for, gonna run right into the hunter with that owl support, gonna support her in a sense, but too early, I suppose, and we're always just going to keep going through this window as the oh. prospector comes in with the support for the magnets. Oh my god, look at Foro just hugging the walls here, not uh, providing any of uh, the prospector stun, but the blink hit was able to wow. miss, and now Hatari just bolting through, and we are going to see a slight pause in the duction. Let's try to like center ourselves here, uh, Sato. What a crazy scramble there saw owl support we saw two magnets thrown one latched on we saw a blink hit that was crazy action at the start and i don't know it's a little over support but that's how fh has to play this if they want to be able to get at least three persons out 
Yeah, definitely really risky. We did see again that Prospector come in for the support and then there was two Cyphers that were well over 50%. So we have that in the back of our minds too, that again, that they are trying to go for the Cypher rush as well as, you know, just raw kiting ability was able to go around that church area for a little bit. But you know, Female Dancer is one chip damage away from going down. So it's looking up in the air at the moment. Um, but uh, okay. we see. Yeah, so looking back at the resources of the both sides, right? Bonbon bon was able to, I mean, one more hit, and I feel like he's going to get a lot of presents. Not not to full presence yet, right? But Blink was already expelled. Unfortunately, it was a little short. You know, Hatari was able to jump the wall, uh, the window. So now the chase still ensues because now we're, we're looking at the shack area of this map. And Prospector is still there. He's already used two magnets. And the stun did happen a little bit. So I'm not sure how many magnets or if he still has any remaining magnets. Because I am i don't know if he was holding three or he was able to regenerate one. Um, no ciphers have popped yet. But like you said, there are those 50% uh, ciphers. But now the action ensues. Female Dancer trying to uh, break that line of sight, Sato. Yeah, definitely going to try to avoid that last bomb. Knowing that that last chip is going to be the death of... Them. So we're gonna try to utilize this slow box to try to gain a little bit more distance. The pirouette does gain distance, but now you're in a little bit of a dead zone and it's gonna oh. get hit despite that box being thrown down. We do see Weeping Clown is in the area gonna try to pressure here with that. Ooh, Abe, he got it! <laughs> yes. But then Ooh, unfortunately <laughs> that was a, a risky call there. You know, using a rocket, able to drop down. Uh, but man, this bought a little bit more time for the team, but what's that compared to getting a survivor down? We are going to see Foru now break up these boxes and also plant a lot of bombs here. See, are going to go for that rescue, but now just it's going to rain down bombs here, able to down the Priestess. Do you see that K2 is trying to just uh, harass here, but two survivors here means they're not even going for Cyphers and the Control Bomb able to injure the Prospector to half health. Yeah, definitely. It's a really tough situation as, they again, there were two survivors in that area, meaning that the Cypher progress is going to be dwindling. We have Prospector on half health now and Seer at chip damage with Weeping Clown with uh, Wanted Order. So they're going to have to just like dwindle with their cards here and wonder and try to figure out what they're going to be with their next move. So um, we do see the Weeping Clown take one chip damage. It's mm -hmm. going to be rather risky to try to go in for this rescue, but we do see two survivors in this vicinity. Oh, the Weeping Clown unfortunately wasn't able to go for the flywheel, but Prospector able to get the rescue. He's able to get that push going. Three Cyphers still remain. The Dancer is on her last chair, able to drop down. Does eat a hit though, so one uh, one more Control Bomb would possibly do it. Hatari able to do a great flywheel. And now it seems like everyone is out and about. Three Cyphers still remain on Foru, actually changing his attention now to the Prospector. Yeah, rather interesting. Uh, this does allow that female dancer to stay alive for a lot longer, but the prospector is going to have to be the one to take the attention from the hunter. So let's just wait and see if this is going to be successful. There are a couple of bombs being thrown down, and he does fall to a bomb. So now prospector will be the one on the chair for the first time here. And, you know, second progress is still, we're still at three cyphers remaining. Mm -hmm. And note that the Seer did have Wanted Order, and the Seer was the one healing up the female dancer. So we're going to see him use the Abnormal to actually prolong the game. So this is the plan of Foru, a slow uh, a slow burn, if you would. Just a, a, a creeping feeling, like quicksand. And now we see that the Prospector is about to go for... Um, well, is about to expire in the half health mark. So it seems like Foru is just going to play it real safe here. I think he had enough of the prospector shenanigans. It's like, all right, I'm just going to get rid of this uh, survivor just to make sure no one else would uh, go for any rescues. But we do see that the Weeping Clown is healed. I mean, the Weeping Clown was able to uh, um, work on a cypher. Female Dancer picking up the music boxes. So they are going to try to prepare for the end game. Seer is already here as well as the Dancer. So this is a very risky rescue situation, Sato. Yeah, definitely. We do see the female dancer take a hit from the bomb in this situation as well. Oh! And we do see a terror shot from the seer. Gonna force Atari to be the one to rescue. Oh! And now they're... Wow! Another hit, and now we're in a double down situation where all the pressure is on FH right now. Double down situation. The cypher isn't ready to pop yet. Seer is gonna be the next one on this rocket chair, but 
They're gonna need to rescue the Seer. They cannot afford another survivor out in the game or else they will be headed to the lower bracket. Yeah, definitely. It's such a do or die situation. And with that prospector being sent back to the manor, you really just need to risk it all because you don't have any other choice. They, If they don't, then it's going to be a game over. Mm -hmm. So we're going to just see the Rainy K in the vicinity, but this you know, is... they're not going to... Yeah, this is what's tough yet. because Hatari is actually working on the last cipher, the abnormal this cipher that's right in front of the the the, the chaired seer. So Rainy K is gonna we'll try to wait this one out, but accelerated decoding is already there, so I'm not sure how far along Hatari is into the um sorry, what was that? Oh, okay. So yeah, we do see that um he is trying to push for that last cipher. He did drop uh, the, um, the the accelerated music box. So let's see if that's enough because Weeping Clown just gets eats a regular hit. He will be falling down. He cannot afford to drop to these bombs. Yeah, unfortunately, uh -oh. he is going to be zoned out, utilizing that flying wheel to avoid this hit, but just go down anyway, and it's looking oh. bad. Oh, man, that secures the win mm -hmm. for them. And it's, it was a good showing, but it just wasn't enough as the Cypher machine does get primed. Foru able to win for his team here, able to control, and that's one of the things you gotta worry about with this hunter. Yes, the breaking wheel didn't work out, but this bonbon, I mean, it was kind of written on paper that he it, it does it, it he would have an advantage in this map, but now it just seems like yeah, you need, this is one of the respected bonbons that you have to be careful of. We do see that Hatari is gonna try to survive as long as possible. One more control bomb. And one more regular hit, he is falling down, and that's going to be a 4k, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, a valiant effort to try to go for that rescue because you have to, but, you know, just really good showing from Touch and Go. They are the winner of this matchup here, so congratulations to Touch and Go. Mm hmm Foro just showing us how crazy his Bonbon bon is. And at first, it was kind of scary when he did switch his attention away from the, the dancer, which was dead on chair, but then... I think it was more of a trade-off. He wanted to secure it down on the Prospector at first. Switching to Abnormal as well and guarding that Cypher, you really wanted to focus on turtling up and hunkering down on the back exit part of the map just to make sure that uh, you are going to feel the wrath of the camp uh, when, when he uses the Bonbon, bon, which again, Bonbon uh, bon camp is one of the most dangerous things in this game. Yeah, definitely. And we really just... Seen that shine so much with this excellent show of the cycle. I'm going to take a look at the stats here right now, seeing that, you know, they did their best. These uh, the containment times are all right, but it just wasn't enough. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think the way he was able to uh, control the situation, um, I think he was also reliant on them feeling pressure that they needed to go for rescues. And this kind of played into the wind condition of the Bonbon bon just. Uh, you know, it's securing an early down, um, even though they were relying on oh, like the, the constant support, right? It wasn't enough because in this game, if you constantly support, the hunter will be able to retaliate. And um, the thing is, it's like your, your skills, some of them don't renew. So the, the, the dancer, her box is already dropped. The, the weeping clown, the rocket. I mean, that was an excellent effort there on the side of Hatari. But I think if you take away the forward and make him use the weeping clown, you can stand a bit of a chance to not get stunned. So at the end of the day, TNG, ladies and gentlemen, are moving on. Be beautiful performance so far from them. Not the last we'll see a fly high. Hopefully they'll fly their way out of the lower bracket and head into the grand finals. But they definitely need your, need your support in doing that. Yeah, definitely continue to cheer on Fly High as they can take as much support as they can get. You know, that will help motivate them to move forward and continue on with this tournament. So definitely kudos to TNG for winning, but definitely even more kudos to FH for persisting and trying so hard as they can to really gain as much points in that do or die situation. 100%. And uh, I would have to say also, ladies and gentlemen, to tune in tomorrow because it's going to be the continuation of the playoffs. We're going to see some new faces here uh, on the caster desk. I'm so excited for you guys to meet the new casters and the new faces of IVA. Sadao being one of them. Guys, give a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, because debuting here, I mean, it's it was kind of nerve-wracking at first. But, I mean, I feel like you found your stride, Sadao. I'm so excited to be sharing the mic with you. It was definitely a blast. And tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to see teams like the Mad Penguins, and the rest duke it out in the upper bracket side uh, for them to be able to 
claim victory to move on over to the grand final. So are we going to see a graphic? I just have to ask the voice in my head. Are we going to see any updates on on what is going to happen? No, it's... Okay, great. So I will tell you this, ladies and gentlemen. Please do tune in tomorrow. Again, like the Nello Mello page. Again, keep commenting. Keep sharing the stream. I did see Sarah hoping that we reach 1,000 viewers. Hopefully that can happen. But uh, that about does it. Sado, any, um, any final words you want to say for tonight? Um, definitely we had a lot of exciting matches, so thank you all for coming, and definitely make sure to tune in tomorrow, and again, give welcomes to the new casters that are going to be on the caster seats, they will also be very appreciative of your support, so definitely keep them in your minds as you cheer on your favorite team. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for everyone here at the back. Shout outs to Red in our ear, and he's the one pushing all the buttons. Shout outs to all the mods out there. Again, IVA back again. Uh, the, at the height, I would say uh, this is uh, the, the biggest and baddest IVA that we are going to have. So do tune in this week and next weekend because we're going to have more giveaways and more amazing Identity 5 action. But for tonight, we're going to sign off here. We'll see you guys tomorrow for the continuation of the playoffs of IVA. So on behalf of everyone here, guys, good night. Peace. Stay silent when you hear this sound. The static particles begin to vibrate with the sound waves, indicating they have acquired energy. It may be a tiny amount, yet it's enough to straighten out my thoughts. But the energy can also be huge. As the setting sun shone upon the final rest, I saw a musical note glimmering in in the air, just as they expected. The movement spread my life energy and pushed me up a pedestal until I could smell the aroma of talent in the air. The aroma was me, but it slowly faded with time. Once it faded, it cast me into the abyss, where the light from my eyes extinguished the light shines through my fingers and onto the white keys as i continue